A beautiful day. We've been through about nine seasons in three days here in Chicago. From some of the hottest weather this city has ever seen to a day yesterday that was very bearable to a day today that is extremely comfortable. With the wind blowing in off the lake today, nice steady cooling breeze. Temperatures probably won't be uh, above the mid 80s for today's game and clearly the humidity is has backed off. How about this? Is this a great promotion or what? These kids out with the umpires during the meeting they are the acting managers and there's a child for every position on the field and they go out there and wait. I mean those jerseys fit perfectly. One of the things about it, Gary is looking that there he goes Sammy he does that every time to right field and says hello to all his fans up there in the bleachers in the right field. He's playing center today. Yeah playing boy. center yeah. But before the game you and I were talking about it. actually right before we came on the air and there were two little kids. I mean they were like knee high to the umpires and whoever was at home plate. And then they ran off to their positions and it was I think it's a little girl. She ran down to first base right there. She is right there. Mark Grace is telling her who what why went for. She doesn't want to leave. No. She says go ahead Mark you go take the day off. I'll take care of it. Maybe there's a ball over there or something. Won't you? I'll go to mommy. It is it's a terrific promotion. And it gives those little kids a memory they will have forever and they will forever love baseball. Yeah. And their families, their parents will forever love baseball. And love just, the Cubs. Oh, and love the Cubs. Just, it's like an immediate bonding. There they are right here. This is taped. And there she goes, <laughs> heading for her position. She said, I'm checking my watch. I check my watch time to get to first base. And adults do participate in this as well. He was out in right field. I think we get a dose he, of that. He's older than the pitcher. <laughs> the real pitcher. <laughs> Carl Farnsworth. Let's take a look at the Mets lineup. Bobby Valentine will have Ricky Anderson leading it off. Edgardo Alfonso second. John Olerud third. Robin Ventura will try and continue the big series in the cleanup hole with Piazza out today. Daryl Hamilton first start as the New York Met in center. Roger Sedano will start in right. A lot of speed out there. Pratt will do the catching today. Ray Ordonez will be hitting eighth and now lighter ninth. And Kyle Farnsworth on the mound pressed into action here today at Wrigley Field for his third game as the three game set. And Terry Mohan was part of the trade that went to the Atlanta Braves. And Kyle Farnsworth, who is a physical specimen, 3% body fat, this kid has. He is terrific. Our Tri State four defense behind Farnsworth. Henry Rodriguez and left Sosa in center today. Glenn Allen Hill and right. Gaetti, Manny Alexander, Mickey Morandini, and Mark Grace around the infield. Benito Santiago behind the plate. And Kyle Farnsworth on the mound. His record two and four with a 6.5 earned run average. 23 year old right hander. And Ricky Anderson is at the plate. Goes after the first pitch and fouls it back. And we're underway here in game three, rubber match. As we have had two very typical Wrigley type games where the offenses have dominated. Mets coming from behind to win the first one 10 9. The Mets came from behind yesterday after trailing 7 0 and tied it up 9 9, only to lose the game 17 10. And as a result, also lost first place in the National League East as the Atlanta Braves beat Philadelphia yesterday to regain the lead by a half game. Cal Farnsworth. Worked against the Mets on Friday in relief. They want him to be a starter. He has won only two games, and that was early in the year. He has not had a win in his last eight starts. And in addition to those eight starts, he's had a number of relief appearances. Outside to Ricky Anderson, two ball, two strike count. Sinker slider pitcher Gary throws hard, has good stuff, and the word on Farnsworth is, is that he can be. Dominating for three or four innings and then simply runs out of gas. Talk about the great body that he has, and he says three percent body fat, and they feel that actually what the Cubs are trying to do is trying to beef him up a little bit, beef his stamina up a little bit, put on some reserves, so he can get by the fifth, sixth, and seventh inning. Our guys in the truck say that they <laughs> yeah. uh, last had their fat measured and it also was somewhere in that vicinity. Three percent body fat is unheard of. <laughs> that's like that's Olympic stuff. Those Our guys, guys had three percent body fat at breakfast this, this morning. morning. That's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. We have those for hors d'oeuvres don't we. Hey guess what. <laughs> three two count. Oh, I'm working on that. 
Three two the delivery to Ricky Henderson and Farnsworth gets the strike. Out. I have talked to several people one of them Jay Hor Horowitz the crack master of the public relations department for the New York Mets has said listen Jay find me here's a good slider fools Ricky and good location I'm trying to get Jay Horowitz to find for me how many three and two counts there have been on both sides the last two days I don't know what it is it's a big number though. There you see the trade made from the Chicago Cubs as Farnsworth was not supposed to pitch today. Terry Mulholland was but the Cubs struck the deal in their starting shortstop Jose Hernandez who had a home run yesterday and Mulholland the schedule started today have both gone to Atlanta. Edgardo Alfonso quickly down on the count two strikes. So the wheeling and dealing of the GMs for at least a while will settle down a little bit. Cubs got the deals they wanted done for the moment. Swung on and missed. Farnsworth's got two K's. You know, you're talking about the trades and a lot of trade rumors around here yesterday. Of course, an afternoon ball game here at Wrigley Field. Take a look at the strike three to Alfonso. Good high fastball. That gets a giddy up on it. One of the teams that was that people were talking about for a lot of the trades Rodriguez, it was the Hernandez straight shortstop here from Chicago um, and they they seem to have been in almost every trade that seemed to be mentioned the Atlanta Braves Galarraga is out of that lineup they've hurt in the shortstop they're looking for pitching because of John Smotes who has the the, uh, the elbow problems and it looked like the Atlanta Braves are really trying to help themselves if and that because. The New York Mets are right there with him. Had it been a year ago or whatever, it may not have made the trade. Now Olerud will get an infield base hit, and Farnsworth took that one off the leg, I think. Appears to be all right for the moment. We'll take a look and see where that hit him. It's an infield single for John Olerud. That's all the Chicago Cubs need is to get another pitcher injured. Pretty good pitch on the outside part of the plate. Oh, went by no, him. Went by him. Went by him. I thought it hit off his front leg, huh? Did not. Break for the Cubs. Olerud's on with the base hit. Now Robin Ventura. Part of those deal with those trades that the Braves made were because the New York Mets are close right to them, not sitting 10 or 12 games behind them. No question about that. Yeah, they uh, they are not the same team they've been in the last few years because of the injuries and the particularly the loss of Galarraga you take all those home runs and 100 plus RBIs out of the lineup and your closer Kerry Leitenberg gone and your starting catcher and your shortstop and your shortstop yep. I mean, you just can't survive those kind of things they have Robin Ventura has he done it again right field way back wind will blow it in at the Ivy the catch made by Glenn Allen Hill. That ball's hit in game one or two of this series. He would have had another home run. After getting two yesterday, Ventura challenged it, but not quite. At Wrigley Field, see what they can do in a wind blowing in day against Mets left hander Al Leiter. For the Chicago Cubs, Mickey Morandini will be leading it off. Bomber met Manny Alexander starting it short today. Mark Grace, Sammy Sosa will bat cleanup. Glenn Allen Hills making the start in right. Henry Rodriguez in left, Gary Gaetti at third, Santiago doing the catching, and Farnsworth hitting ninth. Al Leiter on the mound today for the New York Mets, making his 21st start, a record of 9 and 7, 4.5 earned run average. And his last time out, he pitched against the Chicago Cubs at Shea Stadium and pitched eight strong innings, giving up just eight hits and a single run, walked two and struck out seven. The top gun on the staff for the New York Mets and he's looking for a win number 10. Al Leiter working against Mickey Morandini three for eight in this series for Morandini and the leadoff batter takes a strike on the inside corner. Of all the deals that surprised me Tom I thought Kevin Apier going to Oakland. I thought he would be picked up by one of the big ball clubs Mets. I, mean, I knew it, they knew he was going to be traded. But going to Oakland surprised I, me. I don't know. I, I still don't, I don't understand why. I don't either. Why did they get rid of. What know. does that say about Kenny Rogers. I don't know. Unless it unless getting apiary is that you feel that you're going to get him and you can deal him. 
sometime later this month if you yeah. if you can get him by waivers, which you or you deal him over the winter. You'll never get him through waivers. I don't know. That's, it doesn't make sense for that club to take him. Okay. There's got to be some other you know. There's got to be one more step yep. in that process. It's a shocker. One two to Morandini is outside by lighter. Two balls, two strikes. Morandini one for five lifetime off the Mets left-hander Al Leiter. Two two swung on and missed. Leiter gets the strike up. He's got 104 in the year. Take a look at the Tri-State Ford defense behind Al Leiter here today at Wrigley Field. Ricky Henderson and left. Daryl Hamilton. First day on the job for the Mets here in center. Sedano and right. Ventura, Ordonez, Alfonso, and Roll Rude. The usual four around the infield. Todd Pratt does the catching. And Al Leiter on the mound. We'll mention the other part. There you see the number one percentage fielding outfielder at any outfield position in the National League in Daryl Hamilton. He's he's has he doesn't have the speed of Sedano but he's he has good speed and a very smart defensive player positioning wise very intelligent. And a darn good average 300 fouled off. I talked to several of the scouts here before the game I said what about Daryl Hamilton and almost to a man they said you know four or five years ago they're taking Daryl Hamilton in a heartbeat he could really play you know, he's on the back end of it now does everything very solidly covers ground knows the game exactly what you say he's a real pros pro and understands the game knows the game doesn't throw like he used to doesn't run like he used to but still a still a very solid center fielder and a good little punch and Judy hit the ball everywhere 300 hitter good gap hitter Manny Alexander with the piece of new lumber against Leiter on the one one delivery Manny really bothered by the heat here over the last couple of days this past week he had a bit of a heat stroke he said talking with him yesterday and could not play Friday could have played yesterday but did not feel very well obviously uh, well enough today to be in that starting lineup two ball one strike count former New York Met role player Manny Alexander Leiter comes inside to him and falls behind three and one I'm going to say the Chicago Cubs in their deal with Atlanta got minor league players Micah Bowie and Ruben Cuivado foul back. Bowie will be joining the Cubs staff. He's 24 years old. Had a few appearances out of the bullpen for Atlanta. Spent most of it at AAA. Cuivado's a 20-year-old right-hander, six and five at AAA. There'll also be another player to be named later coming to Chicago. For Hernandez, the shortstop, and Terry Mulholland, a starting pitcher. Three ball, two strike count on Alexander. And the other thing, Gary, about the New York Mets, their trading cannot be done. Their moves, they, they can't be done. Bobby Jones has been throwing on the side. They said Alexander. Bobby Jones has been throwing on the side, is getting to the point where he might be able to be returning to the staff in the rotation in 10 days or two weeks, two and a half weeks. And you've got, when he comes back, you have seven starters on the staff. Something's got to give. Somebody is going to be released, traded. I mean, not, not everybody can go to the bullpen. You're going to have a 15 man, 15 men on your pitching staff. Something's going to happen, and I would imagine there's there are going to be more deals. It'll have to be via the waiver, of course, where you know you may want to get somebody to a certain team, and then somebody else could block it. One of the another team could block that trade, but they're going to have to figure something out. Bobby Valentine and Steve Phillips are going to have to figure that out. I mean, they're they're not done working yet. They could still have work in front of them. Mets did not have to make any roster change today. Bobby Valentine has McElroy in the bullpen today as he's here along with Hamilton before the game. Billy Taylor from Oakland is expected to be here before the game ends. That's McElroy. They still won't have to make a change. They will have to make a roster move when Dunstan joins the team, probably in Milwaukee tomorrow. And probably Mel Mora is going to be sent back yeah. down again. You get a veteran player that can play everywhere the way Sean Dunson can. I mean, he can play in the outfield and a terrific outfielder. You know, not just a filling guy. He can do a great job. And Grace has got a base hit. Grace is now six for ten in this series. Mark Grace. 
things I have not understood about the lineup that the Chicago Cubs use is having Sammy Sosa hit third and Grace fourth. I mean, Grace to me is the quintessential number three hitter, and Sosa it doesn't get any better in cleanup. And you've got guys behind Sosa to protect him. But the Cubs have decided most of the time that they use Sosa in that number three spot. They they switch them around left-handed, right-handed, but. Uh, Mark Grace, an excellent hitter, and a situation you want to try to create for your cleanup hitter more than one guy on the base. And look at this a guy that's hot with a the bat. There you see the 40 major league leading home runs. Two on, lighter, inside doing. Sammy Sosa had a huge series, six for 10. Two home runs in the ball game yesterday, a home run in the ball game on Friday night. Hitting almost 400 against the New York Mets this series in the eight games these teams have played. Lighter, 1 0 pitch. Sosa pops it up. Right field. Sedania. Sedania. Called off the infielders and made the play. You mentioned earlier, Tom, Sosa retired. The Mets now have two center fielders in this ballgame. Legitimate center fielders in Sedano and Hamilton. The Mets like Sedano more in right field than they do center. It's my feeling and that's a guy that can play center field for you for 10 years. Talking about Sedano. This is not an easy play down there. Gary has talked about that being the Bermuda Triangle. That's a lot of things can go wrong there. You fight the sun, you fight the wind, you fight two other bodies, and Sedano take control. One of the things about said, well, he's Sedano does not have the experience to play center field. He's got all the tools, run, throw. Well, how do you learn to play center field? You do it by playing center field, not sitting on the bench or playing in right field. Glenn Allen Hill inserted into the lineup today to play in right field. As Curtis Goodwin, who's not been hitting the ball well at all, had been playing center. He comes out of the lineup today, had been in the first two games. Sosa goes to center and Hill goes to right. Lance Johnson still not available for the Chicago Cubs. He would be their starting center fielder. He's been injured a couple of months. And Hill takes a strike on the outside corner from Leiter. Leiter trying to work his way out of this inning. Two strike count, two down, two on. Jim Riggleman having to juggle the lineup, losing his starting shortstop in the deal last night. And even though the Cubs are hitting the ball hard, there's never enough offense. Their pitching staff, which has really struggled. Not that the Mets hasn't in these two games either, but his staff entirely overworked and struggling even to find four starters, much less five. Todd Pratt goes out to have a word with Leiter. On the signs to Hill with that runner on at second base. Two wins, two losses, and a no decision in his last five starts for L. Leiter. Hill, a 382 hitter off left handers. Got jammed. Good pitch. Leiter gets the strikeout, his second of the inning, no runs, a couple of hits. Two are left on. Unlike the first two games. Well, Met fans, you get your first look at the new center fielder, Darrell Hamilton. Comes over with a 300 average, four homers and 24 RBIs. Batting 306 off lefties, 301 off right-handers. Hamilton uh, just 203 with runners in scoring position. One of the reasons for the RBI numbers being as low as they are. It's more of a table setter than an RBI man. Batting fifth in the lineup today. Fouls that back off Farmsworth. The ball and two strikes. Pretty good contact hitter. He doesn't strike out very often. His ratio is one of the best in baseball. Doesn't draw a lot of walks either. 38 walks, 21 strikeouts. Four stolen bases and nine chances for him. Did the air in Colorado matter? Well, he hit 335 at home, 275 on the road. Two home runs at home and two on the road. Alexander fighting the sun. Hamilton retired. And if you watch a hitter that you've never seen before and see what they're trying to do with the ball, every swing that Hamilton took there, he was trying to hit the ball to left field. 
the pitch away. He tried to hit over there in the last pitch with two strikes, but still trying to hit the ball to left field. Take a look at the last pitch and watch the where his body language is moving. Watch which way he looks like he's trying to hit the ball. Obviously trying to hit it to left field. Slap hitter trying to put it in play. Don't strike out. And that's one reason why the Mets got him. Let's put it in play. No, they don't do not want him to be the home run home run hitter that he is not. That's not going to be his role. Hamilton out of there, one down. And the check swing by Roger Sedano. Did he go around? Yes, two strike count. So Daniel putting up some very quiet, impressive numbers. Foul back. I mean, everybody knows him primarily because he's leading the league in stolen bases, but he's doing a lot more than that. Becoming a much better hitter, too. Very short stroke. Watch how short his stroke is in the sense of the movement he takes from swinging the bat, starting the bat to get into the ball. Not a lot of excess movement, contact, put it in play, hit it to left center field. Don't try to overpower the ball. And use your speed. If he hits the ball on the ground on the left side of the infield, no matter how hard he hits it, he's got a chance for a base hit. He is one of those players that has the tools and ability that just seem to ooze out of him. He could be a center fielder in the big leagues for this ball club for 10 years to come. Now the Mets are independent. Maybe they don't have that luxury. Alexander. Got a hurry, boy. He just got it. Boy. Alexander on Sedano. Oh, he just double clutched. He took that one half step to double clutch and get the ball. And you cannot be afforded that luxury against a guy like Sedano. And I mean, is this close at first base? Wow. He can fly down that line. That little hop right there, that second step, maybe he didn't have a handle on the ball. He's talking about timing. That's, I mean, that's the spike. Inches he was out. That's why he picks up. A lot of infield hits with that speed. Two down, nobody on. Todd Pratt. Mike Piazza getting the day off today. Pratt the opportunity to work behind the plate with all the heat that Piazza put up with in the first two games. Certainly, a day off needed. Ironically, the day that he gets off is the prettiest day here at Wrigley Field, too. This is his 23rd start for Pratt, 23 as a catcher. Piazza waiting. Piazza's had a good series. Pratt fouls it back. Piazza picked up a couple of singles and two runs scored in yesterday's game. Two for five, two for four in game one, including a homer. So now you got Pratt, Louis Lopez, Matt Franco, yep. Sean Dunstan yep. on the bench. Primary bench players. I like it. Bobby Bonilla, when he comes off the DL, what do you do with that? Something's that's another one. Something's got to be done. You can't have somebody on the bench that your manager doesn't like and is not going to use. Is he just going to be sitting there? Can't. Something's got to be done one way or the other. Way. Yeah, if you're in a pennant race, you got to do it. Yeah. You, you have can't to have it. You got to clear the clubhouse. You've got to keep it clean. You got to keep everybody on the same page. And it's the same thing as say, well, if it's Sedano and you're not in a pennant race, you can play him in center field every day and let him do the OJT, learning on the job. Every day, say so you're my center fielder. Period. That's it. You're in a pennant race. You can't do that. If you're in a pennant race, you can't allow those things just to sit around and fester. You have to address that sooner or later. Get and it Aguiani's done. on the bench too. Yeah. Another outfielder. Yeah. That's uh, Mets obviously tried to get a deal that would include Bobby Bonilla, and it didn't happen. Two-two delivery outside to Pratt for Brian McRae. Another. And I love Brian McRae and have great respect for him as a person and a ball player. But he and Bobby Valentine. It came head to head last year at the Atlanta series. McRae said what a lot of guys were thinking. A lot of teams play hard against us because they hate Valentine. It's like we have to play against an extra player. Once he said that in a situation that was key to the Mets, he was history. That was history, and that relationship was history. Yep. And it was, and now McRae's gone. You try and get a working unit, and guys are on, everybody's on the same page. Barnesworth gets the strikeout. That turned around after that strikeout. Watch his reaction to it. And I wonder why Tom a big swing by Todd Pratt. And look at the reaction. I mean the ball by Farnsworth thrown right by him. And he looked back at the catcher. I think Pratt was going to watch. He says wow. I think he was concerned that maybe he came close to hit him. 
the catcher Santiago with the bat. I think that was it. It wasn't necessarily what the pitch did or anything else. He just simply threw it right by him. It wasn't a spitball or some illegal pitch. He just threw it simply overpowered him. But I mean that big follow through a big swing. He almost got the catcher. Benito Santiago looked up at him. That bat went right over his head on that cut. He said don't do that to me. <laughs> hey you're a catcher. <laughs> Henry Rodriguez 18 home runs 69 RBIs Benito Santiago who is the backup catcher really here getting the work today. Rodriguez sixth best average in the league coming into today's play at 331. We'll check on this to be sure but Philadelphia got four runs in the first inning against Atlanta today they're now trailing by a score of 10 4 but Greg Maddox was the starting pitcher. Swung on and missed. The Braves came back for two there they got two more in the third and five in the fourth and another in the in the fifth. So they are up in that game and they're up on the totem pole too. If they're now a half game ahead. Those are the standings via the pennants and the center field scoreboard here in Chicago. Al Leiter with a three ball one strike count on Rodriguez. Actually if Maddox gave up all those runs and settled in that is a typical Greg Maddox game. Throughout his career, the first inning's been a disaster for him, and then he settles down. Leiter gives up the walk, and it's a leadoff walk here in the second. Met fans, Todd Huntley returns to Shea Stadium with the Dodgers for a four game series starting Friday, August 6. Saturday, August 7, adults will be getting a green Mets cap as they celebrate Irish night. For tickets, call 718 507 TIXX. The Dodgers, the Mets, and Green Cat Night celebrating the Irish. What was the date on that, lad? I missed that. The date on that? The date on that, yeah. I, I think I, I might make that one. I think that's the seventh. <laughs> you want to show up for that one? I want to go. I want to get my green hat, you know. Well, you'll get one. And the pitch is inside to Gary Gaetti. Gliders walk 55 in 132 innings, striking out 105. That walk he just gave up. Gaetti got the grand slam yesterday. Takes the pitch inside here, 2 and 0. Oh. And guess what? Well, we said it yesterday, we'll say it today. 3 2 pitch right down the middle. And a grand slam, nothing new to Gary Gaetti. There were a couple dozen 3 2 counts yesterday, fouled this, off. This is a ball club, the Chicago Club. They win and or lose by the home run. They will try to slug you to death. The Sammy Sosa syndrome, and when they do not hit home runs, they are a different ball club and an easy ball club, an easier ball club to eat to to defeat if you keep Sammy Sosa in the ballpark. Gaetti chased one on liners, set him up away, two and two. Gaetti's 229 off left-handers with just two home runs off southpaws. He hits only 181 off right-handers this year, but he does have six of his eight homers off right-handers. 2-2 delivery by Leiter jammed him. He went around. Boy, did he set him up and fool him. Jeff Nelson, home plate umpire, made that call himself. Leiter gets his third K. That's that little cut fastball on the inside part of the plate. Looks like it's going to be over the plate. Just keeps coming in, coming in, coming in. And just eat you up. Glenn Adam Nils struck out on the same pitch to end the first inning. And that has been Al Leiter's bread and butter pitch. It looks like it's going to be out over the plate. A little cutter. And it just keeps fighting right in, right at the hands of the right handed hitter. And same pitch right there. Veteran Benito Santiago. Still one of the best arms in the game. But on the backside of a catching career now at the age of 35. Came in as a 261 career hitter. Not up to that so far this year. 13th major league season for Benito Santiago. One ball, one strike. It is still one of the most beautiful parts of the game of baseball. The catcher throwing out a base dealer with a perfect throw to second base. It is a spectacular thing to watch. And Santiago did it, Santiago did it the other day to Edgardo Alfonso. Didn't play much. All of a sudden he's in there and boom an absolute strike to second base. It's a beautiful aspect of the game. He used to be able to throw the ball on his knees from behind the plate to center field on a line to the center field just for the heck of it. Two one delivery to him. 
Inside corner strike. And the count's two and do. I had the luxury. Jerry Grody is a catcher and then went to Cincinnati and had Johnny Bench as a catcher. I got to watch Steve Yeager throw. Guys that could throw the ball as well as anybody in the history of the game, those three. Great part of the game. Watching their bodies move behind on plate as they set up the throw. Wow. Right there, Benito Santiago wanted to argue, but really not much to argue about. Four strikeouts for Leiter. The thing about Al Leiter is that he will make you so conscious of that cutter on the inside part of the plate slider that starts off the plate and comes back to the outside corner. Watch this pitch. That's the backdoor slider. Starts outside in Santiago. You, you're so conscious inside in this area and here, all of a sudden you can't hit the outside pitch anymore. Great thing about pitching, you got to pitch both sides of the plate. And when Al Leiter does that, he is very successful. 23-year-old Kyle Farnsworth, one for 18 at the plate for a starter who's been used both out of the pen and as a starter. It's his 12th start, 18th appearance. Leiter eating him up on the first two pitches with a runner on at first base and two down. He's got a pitcher swing, doesn't he? And <laughs> So sometimes, well, if Santiago throwing the ball is one of the prettiest parts of the game, sometimes watching a pitcher swing the bat, and I thank God Ralph Kiner isn't here, watching a pitcher swing the bat can be one of the ugliest things. In, he would in agree the, with you. Yes, he would. He would agree with he you. He would. One, two, delivery by a lighter, and that's it. Wow, what an inning. He struck the side out after walking Rodriguez, the leadoff batter. Fridays for Los Angeles. Friday through Monday for that series with Todd Hundley and company. Davey Johnson, former Met manager, all coming to New York. Mets have a road trip left out west where they'll be playing the Western teams. That's our CNET schedule. People waiting to catch home run baseballs beyond Wrigley Field. Ray Ardonias will lead it off. Ray not likely to give him one, but you never know. Two for eight in the series for the Mets shortstop. Kyle Farnsworth gets a strike on the outside corner. Three strikeouts, no walks for Farnsworth so far. Ordonez, Leiter, and Henderson do up for the Mets, who lead the Cubs in the season series five games to three. That will be fouled down the line, one and two. You're talking about home runs, Gary, and the wind fighting against Ray Ordonez, so the odds of him him hitting one out are less and less the high fly ball home runs will get knocked down here in Wrigley Field on a day like today right on that outside corner strike three well, a lot of strikeouts already on both sides in this game but talking about home runs that wind blowing right off the lake right in toward home plate from center field the high flies will get knocked down we've seen that already in the ball that Robin Ventura hit to right field that easily a home run the first two days of this series Friday and Saturday the long drive you can hit through the line drives that are home runs normally will continue to be not line drive home runs here in this ballpark today the big high flies will get knocked down this one a high fly in the infield and Gary guy has got times where it's got two quick outs two down in a hurry here in the third inning. Times where it throws the ball over to the dugout. Why? Because he retired L. Leiter? <laughs> Maybe he just didn't want the baseball. He's looking, he's still looking over there. And they, there it is. For some reason he wanted that he wanted that baseball. Maybe he cut it real good. <laughs> and a uh, strike taken by Ricky Anderson. I have no idea why he would want that ball. Reggie Anderson struck out his first time up. Four K's in the game for Carl Farnsworth. I take that as a challenge. But I'm going to find out. I'm going to read this press guide and find out that maybe that is the 1,000th out. He's got. I'm going to find out. He's not old enough to have a thousand out. I'll make something up. It'll sound good. Don't okay. Worry. 2 delivery. Ricky to first. Grace over. Good inning. For Farnsworth. Cubs have Mickey Morandini leading it off against Leiter. Morandini, a strikeout victim, his first time up. One for six now, lifetime off Leiter. 
Cubs have good numbers against left handed starters this year. They are 20 and 12 against left handed starters. They continue this longest homestand in 18 years for the Cubs, hoping to get a win in this series. Morandini is not going to reach that pitch. Quickly, two strikes on him. Basic thing about pitching a hitter, a pitcher making the hitter protect both sides of the plate. You got the stuff that Al Leiter does. He's going to be in the driver's seat. How much today we've talked about it. Gary and I have talked about it. I've made to rant and rave about it. You've got to pitch inside so you can pitch outside. And Al Leiter does that very well. Another one. Six strikeouts. Having faced 10 batters. One away here in the third. Take a look at last inning. And now lighter three strikeouts. I thought that was a cut fastball. That was actually the slider to Gaetti. And then the backdoor slider to Santiago. The pitcher, no chance on the outside part of the plate for Archford. Strike three, three strikeouts in a row. Now four for Lighter. That is a nasty pitch against left handers. One ball count on Manny Alexander had a single. He and Gray singled in the first inning. With a Cub hit so far in the ballgame. Inside 2 0 count. Leiter has a 5 and 2 mark lifetime against the Cubs, including a victory this year. 5 1 at Shea in July 25. His last outing when he worked those strong eight innings, giving up a run on seven hits. He struck out seven Cubs in the last game he pitched against them. 2 1 delivery. Alexander takes it inside 3 and 1. Alexander, a very patient hitter. Well off the plate. 3 1. Fouls it back. Full count. Lighter with a 3 2. And Alexander's gone. Mercy. Seven strikeouts. Let's take a look at our Lexus out of town scoreboard. Lots of games going on on a Sunday afternoon. There you see Atlanta with Greg Maddox starting the game leading. Cincinnati leading the Giants. That's where the Mets go next, Milwaukee. St. Louis got a lead early. And the later starts. American League. Mark Grace. Strike on the outside corner. Atlanta leading the Mets by a half. Phillies by five. Houston's got a three and a half now over Cincinnati. Houston won Cincinnati lost yesterday. Arizona's two and a half over the Giants. Hello. Arizona's won five. Both they and the Giants won yesterday. One ball, one strike count on Grace. And that one ripped to right field. Sedano with speed can't get it. Into the ivy it goes. And down to second base with yet another Grace double. A career full of two batters. What a sweet swing. The pitch before that it looked like out lighted to an off speed breaking ball. And there another off-speed pitch right in the middle of the plate. The pitch that almost hit Grace was not a fastball. It didn't move him back. And then Leiter came right back with another soft, soft pitch up in the strike zone. And Grace read it from the time it left his fingertips, Leiter's fingertips, and boom, it doubled down that right field corner. You could see saw that pitch a mile away. You could see if he just kept his hands back, waited for it to get there, and then stroked it to right field. 398 doubles now for Mark Grace in his career. And closing in on the 2000 hit mark, he'll become the eighth Cub to reach that mark. Cap Anson, the all time leader in hits for Chicago. Now here's Sammy. And Sosa takes it inside. Sosa flied out his first time up. He is five for 20 lifetime 
against Al Leiter with one home run. Leading the majors now with 40 on the year. Two away. No score. Jammed it. No play. Sosa's had 13 homers off left handers, 27 off right handers. And he's faced right handers about twice as many times as he has lefties this year. Grace at second base. Bear in mind, not a speedy runner, Mark Grace, should there be a base hit here by Sosa. Sammy had the RBI lead for a moment yesterday. He is now second in the league and runs batted in. Bat has moved ahead of both Sosa and Williams. Bagwell now at 94, Sosa 93, and Williams 92. Mark McGuire with 90 right behind them. Henderson. Ricky hauls it in. Sosa's retired. No runs. The double by Grace, but he is left stranded. Chicago. Unless you live here, then it's first. And the Cup fans on hand. They've gotten lots of sunshine. The bleacher rights have in this series. That first game here with those soaring temperatures, they had a lot of serious problems with folks who getting sunstroke and overheated. Cubs did everything they could pouring water on folks during the game with hoses and having water available but when you're sitting in this kind of sun without lotion on you're in trouble popped up second base Alfonso Morandini's back new Dodge trivia question on this Sunday afternoon looks like this the Mets scored 20 runs in the last two days what is the club record for runs on consecutive days. No, that's not the record we're told. 20, isn't it? John Olerud. Olerud takes a strike on the inside corner. John had a single his first time up. He's six for ten in this series. His average bumping back up over that 300. Mark. And he pushes that one to left field towards the gap. Rodriguez will get there. How much better baseball is when two guys pitching know what they're doing. And you know that's there's a that ball there affected by the wind though. That ball held up so the left fielder could get to it. But I was thinking exactly the same thing you're talking about is that you know pitchers can get some psych themselves out. They say oh my god the wind is blowing out I got to be careful you be careful you're behind hitters you're two and oh three and here we go here we go again both these pitchers today have come right out say okay. Yeah, the wind's blowing in. Hit it out if you can. The philosophy of pitching doesn't make any difference if the wind is blowing in or blowing out. And the more you get behind with the wind blowing out, the worse trouble you get into. And we've seen it on Friday and Saturday. No question. I mean, there were just, I mean, bushelfuls of two and all three, one and three, two counts. Sosa hitting home runs on three and two counts. Gaetti three and two counts. Everybody had a three, two I count. Know. Not here today. Two strike delivery, Ventura reaches. And somehow, somewhere, pitching coaches have, have forgotten to get across to these young pitchers that regardless of what, whether you're an A ball, triple A, double, it doesn't make any difference. You've got to be ahead. You have to be ahead. Look at the Schwab leaders. Robin Ventura, top of that pile over the last 10 days. Ian Bonds, 14. Sosa with 12. Palmer met Rico Bronia. And Fernando Tatis. Our Charles Schwab leaderboard. Robert Ventura overall now sixth at RBIs in the league. There. Now there's no that swing right there. There's a ball and two strikes. And it's so it's so obvious. And if you're sitting on the bench and you're watching one and two in a pitch, borderline pitch, Robert Ventura's got to swing it. He can't take it. If it's two and one, maybe you take it. And just missed for that one. Jeff Nelson looks as though he's giving the pitchers the corners, oh, yeah. huh? Yeah, he's got a big strike zone today, too. Two ball, two strike count, two down, nobody on. Farnsworth. You can see why they like this 23 year old right hander. As we mentioned, when he came on in relief, even though he was low in the draft in the selection, the Cubs have been very high on Farnsworth's performance in the minor leagues. 
looks like he's got a pretty good idea about pitching. 3 2 on Ventura. Pitching both sides of the plate. Good sinker, good slider, good riding fastball. Let's see what he does in 3 and 2. The Wichita, Kansas. 3 2 and a foul ball. Took, took something off the pitch, it looked like. Ventura was underneath it, a little bit out in front of it. He got the ball up. Robin leading the Mets in both home runs and RBIs. Who would have thought he would be the home run leader? He's one ahead of Mike Piazza. And 84 runs batted in. That'll be in the seats. Three and two. One of the things that happens, I think, Tom, in this day and age in sports, and maybe forever, but more so now, players get highlighted early, not unfairly. The Piazza, the Maguire, the Sosa, the big stars, and even when they may not be playing well for a season or a shorter period of time, they still have the name and the aura about them, while other guys like Ventura, who never reached that aura, have these tremendous seasons that go largely unnoticed, except by people following the ball club every day. That's kind of what's happening to Robert. He is a pro's pro. Hill three for 16 lifetime off Al Leiter getting a right handed bat into the lineup today against Leiter the lefty down to third and foul all the two strikes. Yeah you can see Glenn Allen Hill looking inside there he opened up looking for the pitch on the inside part of the plate in off the plate and when you do that you open yourself to the outside pitch that's what pitching is all about and that's where the bat is moving. Just down low off the plate, two balls, two strikes. Glenn Allen Hill, bench player now for the Chicago Cubs, utility outfielder. He'll strike out a lot. Add another one. Eight strikeouts now for Lighter. That's baseball also brought to you by Charles Schwab, providing people, technology, and support. His strikeout high is 11. He's reached it four times. Last time was 97. He's got a real shot at it today. Eight strikeouts. We're in the fourth inning. One away. Rodriguez drew a walk his first time up. Lighter looking for his tenth win of the year and second against the Cubs this season. Outside for a ball. Rodriguez one for eight in this series. Home run. Ahead on the count again, two balls and no strikes. Rodriguez had been out of the lineup until the Mets came in on Friday. He'd missed five games with bruised ribs and a back strain. It occurred against the Mets, in fact. He went back into the lineup on Friday night. Friday afternoon rather went around on that one fooled by it two balls two strikes that was that great catch he made in left field on that Friday night game I think it was Gary that he went to left center and dove out after the ball landed on that rib cage thought about it three balls two strikes Jeff Nelson the home plate umpire working the game today lighter working in a hurry three two delivery foul back. Tom and I were talking between innings. The umpire situation is getting ugly. None of these umpires had resignations that were accepted in this crew. There was a letter, though, from one of the wives, Ed Montague's wife, to one of the other wives, Mark Hirschbeck's wife. It was in the New York Times, and I'm supposing other papers. John Hirschbeck's wife, rather, which was really ugly. I mean, the umpires now not only are fighting the leagues and Major League Baseball now they are fighting amongst themselves those umpires who took their resignations back and those who did not and the letter from one wife to another was from Montague's wife who did not withdraw his resignation to John Hirschbeck's wife who did that is Hirschbeck's brother here. The breaking ball is taken inside. One ball, one strike. Gary Gaetti. 
Now the wives are writing letters publicly to other wives of umpires. One one, and that's in there. One and two. Ugly, isn't it? Ugly. I mean, really ugly. The bad part, to, see, to me, it seems that it's it's such a bad reflection on the game itself. And to let this kind of thing stew over and boil. And the people at the top of the ladder of baseball, as far as I'm concerned, have not done a good job of not allowing this stuff to happen. They shouldn't allow it to be out there like this. Now they've you had don't to want these relationships no. with the people that work for you. Now they've had to warn the they've warned the umpires not to harass their colleagues. Oh, man. Ugly. You can't just point your finger and say, no, it's not my fault, it's your fault. Kill the game. And you still got to protect the game and treat it with integrity. Wow. It's a guess. I would think about 30. Probably Philadelphia. No, here. 34. Back in 90, June 12 and 13 consecutive days. 34 runs. That's the Mets record for runs in consecutive days. These two pitchers, nowhere near those numbers today. Daryl Hamilton. First at bat as a Met, he popped out. 23-year-old Carl. Farnsworth no walks four strikeouts lighter one walk and ten strikeouts for L lighter. They are dominating Cubs have three hits. The Mets have one a single by Olaru maybe two a base hit by Hamilton. So Daryl Hamilton leads off the fifth inning with a single in front of Sammy Sosa. Mets get the leadoff man on here in the fifth. One of the things about the wind blowing in here at Wrigley Field, it will knock the ball down. The outfielders will play a little bit shallower on days, and the wind is blowing in. And that ball by Hamilton hit the center field, died right in front of Sammy Sosa. Couldn't get up to yesterday. It's an easy fly ball that would carry all the way to the outfielder, and here the wind knocks it down. Four for five in stolen bases for Hamilton as Roger Cedeno is up. Hamilton on at first for the Mets second hit. Cedeno checking with Cookie Rojas at third. He grounded out his first time up but almost impossible as we've said to double him up. Especially hitting from the left side where he's batting 327. Cedeno takes Farnsworth's pitch down low to an oak. There's Cookie at third. Farnsworth with Grace holding Hamilton. There goes Hamilton. Throw down is on the money. Santiago got him. Anita Santiago throws him out 33% of the time this year, and Hamilton is a victim. Boy, just an absolute minimum of body movement by Santiago. When you see Hamilton take off, I thought it was going to be the hit and run, a situation where you got to have Cedeno swinging the bat if nothing else. To protect the base runner when you have the kind of arm behind home plate that Santiago has. Boy, his footwork is terrific, Santiago's is. Release is perfect and right on the money again. And Cedeno then draws a walk. So there's the first walk given up by Farnsworth, and Santiago may be tested again by the league's leading base dealer. This is going to be a good contest right here. You would think somewhere Cedeno is going to go. This and this if he does go this is worth the price of admission right here. Santiago against Ro uh, Roger Cedeno the league leader and you're going to get a trip to the mound by the manager. The way this game is going one run might be enough. The Riggerman will check with Farnsworth particularly regarding Cedeno. So Daniel leading the league with 52 stolen bases. Womack still at 44. Todd Pratt, if they could get a ground ball, good chance for a double play here if they can keep Sedano at first base. And you would think the message from the manager is make sure he stops. Do not give him a walking lead, talking about Sedano at first. And give your catcher a good chance to throw him out. Don't give him a walking lead. Pratt goes after the first pitch and fouls it off. Oh. 
Farnsworth has been able to get the count to 0 and 2 on 16 of the 15 batters he's faced in this game, getting ahead of the count that Tom has talked about so often. Farnsworth today has been able to do that. Mets getting the leadoff man on for the first time in this inning. Only one walk. That's the Daniels on there now. And so Daniels got a huge lead. Oh my. He took the horse right out of my mouth. He could have walked down there. <laughs> huge lead. One of the things a pitcher has to do and learn how to do is they give a couple of moves, different moves to first base. Look at the size of this lead. And so Daniel thought he was going to go and then stop. Maybe he didn't feel comfortable with the jump. Wow. He is way off there, folks. It's one of the biggest leads I've ever seen. You got to learn to have a couple of moves over there in a situation when you have a base runner that has the kind of lead that Sedano has, and you give him the mediocre move. Mike Marshall, the relief pitcher for the Giant, for the Dodgers, did it so very well. Got him leaning, got him. There it was. You get the weight going one way, and they got Roger Sedano at first base. That's another one of the moves right there. Maybe that trip by Jim Riggleman to the mound. The learning curve of the young player walking away dead away from the base and not sidestepping away from the base. That's why you get caught. You got your balance going. See how he's walking away with his back to the base. Uh -uh. You do you never cross over never getting a lead ever never. Mookie Wilson will be talking with him about that. That's why you don't. So Daniel once he crosses over on his step obviously he's got an extra move to get back into a position to get back to the bag. Farmsworth varied his throw to first that time with a quick step off. So the Mets in this inning have had a runner caught stealing and one picked off. Now there are two down even though there have been a single and a walk. Todd Pratt one ball two strike count two down nobody on. Barnsworth one two missed outside. Twenty three year old right hander who the opponents have hit for a three twelve average this year. But he is just learning the task of pitching. Two two delivery. Almost he had Pratt leaning with the pitch was inside to him. three and two. Towards third. Diane. So despite a single and a walk only three batters faced in the inning. It remains scoreless. That, that ball popping that glove that's terrific. That's music to a pitcher's ears right there. <laughs> that was a thing of beauty. Good job. One more and he ties his career high in strikeouts in a game 11. Which as we mentioned earlier. He said a couple of years ago. Not much question he's going to get a new one today. Grounded foul. Two strike count in a hurry. There is Jeff Blauser on deck as Farnsworth is going to be coming out of the game. The bullpen's been active through the last inning, in fact. Pitcher called up by the Cubs today. Steve Rain was warming up. Now they've got Beck thrown. So apparently, a Wow, going to pull Farnsworth out of there throwing a two hitter. Well, the word on Farnsworth is that in the fifth and or sixth inning that he would tend to run out of gas. He certainly didn't look like it last inning. Maybe they're protecting his arm. He did pitch Friday night. Yep. Benito Santiago and that's 11. So Al Leiter has tied his mark for most strikeouts. He has now struck out four in a row. Fastball up above the top of the strike zone. And Santiago went fishing, catching nothing. Leiter did it with Florida in 
July of 97 against Cincinnati his last time out. Now Jeff Blauser former brave. Back up infielder for the Chicago Cubs pinch hitting for Farnsworth. Farnsworth will finish the five innings no runs and two hits. And Blauser bloops one to center field. Hamilton's there. Two down. Pretty neat scorebook so far. Farnsworth walked one, struck out four. You got to have these guys put it in play a little bit. I mean, if you strike out a lot of people in a row, it's a lot of work. So you got to have them hit the balls the outfield. Well, you don't want to be flirting with that. You know, consecutive strikeout record. That's Whoever right. owns that one in the big leagues, I don't know who that is, but you want to stay away from that record. <laughs> Little bloop to center once yeah, in a while. Yeah. Thank you very much. Two down, <laughs> nobody on, and Mickey Morandini, he has struck out twice. We'll have one of those quizzes somewhere along the line, most strikeouts. I know that. You think so? And we'll have it somewhere. Would you have a guess on it? I'll or? have a real big guess on that one. <laughs> Wanted to check. I'll tell you the number, the, the date. date, and the pitch. Pitch and the by pitch. pitch. Yeah, yep. absolutely. One strike count here with two down. Do we need to wait for the? No, you'll get it sooner or later. New Dodge. As soon as we get another. <laughs> I can use it on more than one broadcast. Oh, absolutely. Good. Absolutely. Yeah. One one. Morandini waving. Boy, the, he has had no chance. On those pitches. He's so far off the plate on those pitches. Like six inches away from the end of the bat when he swings. One ball, two strike count. Could be a new record coming up here with another one of those cuts. One, two delivery. And outside, he didn't chase two and two. Two down, nobody on. Morandini takes it down low three and two. The eighth three two count we've had today. Swung on foul tip. Well we're doing better than we were doing yesterday. We had 19 yesterday. Jay Harrowitz found that out. We had 19 yesterday three and two counts. And a lot of runs scored yesterday. Friday we had 12 three and two counts. It seemed like every time you turned around, yesterday at least, there was a three and two count on the hitter. Lighter's got one going right here on Mickey Morandini. Three two. Just got a piece off the end of the bat. Boy, he's barely getting that ball, isn't he? How you really reach? You look at that defense, and you know. You look at the defense in the outfield for the. New York Mets. Ricky Henderson is way over to the line. You know how you're going to get pitched. If you're Mickey Morandini, all you have to do is read the outfield. Look at Hamilton way around to the left side of center field. You know where they're going to pitch you. 3 2 again. Came inside to him. Morandini handled it, but foul. Well, you know where they should pitch you. One of the things a pitcher has to do is pitch to the defense if you're going to set up and favor one side of the field. You know, the pitch before was way outside, and the ne next pitch inside. And that pitch outside, you can see that's the way they're playing them defensively. And if you exaggerate on your defense, the pitcher has to pitch that way. You just go ahead and play your outfielder straight away. Okay, then you can pitch both sides of the plate and pitch creatively as you want to. But if the defense is set up a certain way, you have to be that way. That one was not where they were playing him. So Daniel, a long run. Will not get to it. That'll hop into the well. Morandini looking to third. Relay throw to third base will not be in time. A triple for Mickey Morandini. So we were talking about Tom. So Daniel was playing way over to center. Everybody playing over toward the left side of the field. So Daniel way over at right center. And that is right after you've thrown a pitch in there. And Morandini clouded it foul and hasn't had a good pitch on the uh, pitch on the outside part of the plate yet. That's the previous pitch. The foul ball hit down the right field line and hit well. And look at this. 
Not as far out as the pitches before, but still from middle in and pulled. And when your defense is played that playing that way, you can't give a hitter the opportunity to hit it where your defense is not playing. Nicky Morandini, fifth triple, two in this series, as he picked up a triple in yesterday's game. Uh, Friday night's game, rather. And Morandini's back at third again. So a big chance here for Manny Alexander, who has a hit. One for two. That is the fourth hit for the Cubs. The first base runner to get over to third in the ballgame. Alexander. Takes the pitch down low. Alexander's hitting 323 with runners in scoring position. He's had limited chances because he has not started with Hernandez, the regular shortstop. But Hernandez, of course, traded yesterday. 2-0 count. 2 and 1. Pretty good swing right there by Alexander. 2 and 0 count, looking away. Good swing, trying to hit the ball hard on the right side. When you're heading the count, you can look inside, you can look outside, you can pick one part of the plate you want to try to look for the ball. And you could tell by that swing that Alexander was looking away, got the pitch out there, fouled it back, but he got the pitch he was looking for. 2 1 delivery to him inside, 3 and 1. He's making his 25th start, getting 292 in games he starts. And those numbers when he gets an RBI chance. Got fooled on that one. Oh, mercy. Look at him. Whatever he thought was coming, that wasn't it. Three and two. Totally different swing. And a real aggressive swing on the 2 0 pitch there. 3 1. He looked like he might have been guessing middle in. Got the ball on the outside part of the plate. Runner at third base, no score in the game. Still 3 2 with two down here in the fifth. Leiter takes a lot of deep counts, always has, because he's a pitcher who works the hitters. Alexander bloops that one. That's going to fall in for an RBI base hit. And the Cubs take a 1 0 lead. <laughs> Mickey Morandini set it up with a triple. We have seen some long home runs in this series. And how you get the runs across does not make a difference if you can get them across a little bloop single not how hard you hit it but where you hit it. And the mistake of the inning was the pitch to Morandini allowing him to hit the triple down that right field line. Runner goes throw down by Pratt not in time. A stolen base for Alexander is fourth of the year. It looked like a good throw from Todd Pratt. Good footwork, boom the hop and the throw there, but a big jump. From first base by Manley Alexander, maybe he caught Al Leiter napping upset with the RBI single and not paying attention to him. Good aggressive baseball by the Cubs here. Now Mark Grace always year after year, not only a 300 hitter, but a Tremendous clutch hitter. 340 for Grace with runners in scoring position this year, and that is not uncommon for Mark Grace. Two down. This is a two out rally. Leiter struck out Santiago, got Blouser the pinch hitter, then Morandini's triple and the single by Alexander to put the Cubs on the board. Even better with two outs. Already a double and a single for Grace. First three hitters in the lineup have all five hits. Morandini's got a triple, Alexander's got two singles, and Grace has a double and a single. And lighter, 3 1 to Grace. And that's going to be a base hit into center field. 
Alexander scores. 2 nothing Cubs. He'll wear you out. Well, you hear me use the term pros pro. Robin Ventura is one of them. Mark Grace is one of them. Edgardo Alfonso. And here it is, Grace, his turn. Not trying to do too much with the ball. He'll take the single, he'll take the RBI. Good two out hitting. And on pitch number 101 from Al Leiter, here in the fifth inning, the Cubs put a two spot on the board. Six hits off Leiter, now Sosa. All this coming with two down. And Kyle Farnsworth going to have a chance to win this game because these runs are to his credit as he came up for a pinch hitter, Blouser, in this inning. And he worked five, enough to be a record. Sammy Sosa's flying out twice. Runner on at first, Grace is three for three. Two nothing lead for the Cubs. Does he ever take a weak cut? Every swing cuts down a little bit sometimes with two strikes. Not all the time. Sometimes with two strikes, he will cut his swing down. I talked about it yesterday about after Mike Piazza, who I think is the best bat speed in the National League. Sammy Sosa's number two in my book. Sammy Sosa has had a home run in each of his last three. Four home runs in his last 13 at bats. His two homer game yesterday, third this year, and the 36th multi homer game of his career. 1 2 delivery by Leiter. Check swing. That looked like he went. He did. Mike Hirschbeck, first base umpire. Sammy not happy about it, but he went a good ways around on that one. But the Chicago Cubs come up with a couple of runs with two outs on three hits and take the lead. Unfortunately for him it came in an inning where he gave up two runs three hits three consecutive hits and now Rod Beck will come on in middle relief work here for the Cubs. And the Mets Ray Ordonez will face him takes a strike and didn't like the call at all. Only 19 games because of injuries for the 30 year old right hander. How quickly you can lose your job. Rod Beck, 51 saves last year, came back, got injured. Terry Adams is now the closer for this team, and Beck working in middle relief. Not a bad thing for the Cubs. But 51 to middle relief. Ordonez, grounder right back to him. Beck can't find it. Now does, won't get him. Infield hit. Ray Ordonez leads it off for the Mets with a single here in the sixth. You don't think it's a single? <laughs> I saw you looking at me. You're not even looking at me. I saw you. Excuse me? I mean, are we judging that uh, you jumped on a base hit on this thing? They gave him a base hit. Uh, of course they're going to give him a base hit, but that's <laughs> not an error. That's, if he doesn't touch that ball, that's a 6-3 out. Pitcher was an infielder after he lets go of the ball. That's a misplay by an infielder. Here's Leiter for the sacrifice, fouls it back. Base hit my foot. Not his foot, was the glove. He hit it with his glove. <laughs> Just, I, I'm sorry. No, I agree. This is the big leagues. I agree. Oh, oh boy, for errors man. to occur in this day and age, you really got to muck gotta, it up. You got to be real bad. Leiter trying to sacrifice here on Beck. Pitches outside. A 2 nothing lead for the Cubs. Al Leiter has six sacrifices. He leads. He and Reed leading the Mets in that department for pitchers. Ray Ardonias with seven leads the team. 1-1. One, one. Lighter. Nice bunt. Gaetti. He'll go to first. Morandini covers and a sacrifice. 
Gets Ordonez down to second base. Creates a scoring chance for the Mets. You can help yourself by fielding your position. You can help yourself by bunting if you're a pitcher. And perfect execution by Al Leiter. I don't think he will ever be used as a pitch runner, however. But good execution on the bunt. Dead the ball right out in front of the plate. Good job. Has that loping stride, doesn't he? Yeah, I think he's more a long distance runner than a sprinter. Okay. Now we'll see if Ricky Henderson can do it against Beck. Anderson has faced Beck only three times, one for three. RBI chance in a 2 1 game in the sixth inning, and a timeout taken by Henderson. Strikeout victim and has popped out 0 for 2, 3 for 11 in the series. Beck pitches way over on that third base side of the rubber has to swing his body back in order to get lined up for the pitch. He creates as severe an angle as he possibly can to home plate. And to the right handers it looks like he's coming out of that shortstop position. Oh, one deliveries outside one and one to Henderson. Why do you end up with bone chips on your elbow. Beck had surgery. On that elbow and have it cleaned out get all the bone spurs and bone chips Felix already on the bullpen. He has pitched in this series already. Runner at second. Anderson takes it up high two and one. Left handers have hit back at 429 right handers at 341. In the games he's appeared in this year three homers two by right handers. Two one delivery Anderson swings through it two and two. Well there's a situation Ricky Anderson getting a pitch. And for some reason missed it. You can see him pound himself on top of the helmet with his bat. Oh, change up that sort of couldn't read it from up here. And Ricky guessing fastball didn't get it. 2 2 delivery. One of the reasons for the high numbers on Beck, this is only his fourth game since coming off the DL. He's worked only three innings. He's on the DL from May 17 forward with that elbow surgery Tom was talking about. He did pitch earlier in the year. 3 2 delivery. Check swing and walked him. So Beck struggling here. Henderson is on. Two on. In the middle of the Mets order, getting close. And Jim Riggleman, like all managers in this day and age, once they get into the bullpen, they spend a lot of time wiping their brown. Oh, boy. And he's figured you got to take Farnsworth out. Why? Well, I mean, they know a lot, obviously a lot more about their pitcher than we do. And if he's on a pitch count, yes, he pitched the other day. And it's the whole tempo of the game changes. All of a sudden, you get somebody not throwing strikes. Two starters have gone ahead on almost every hitter. Oh. Beck's fallen behind them all. Edgardo Alfonso's had an 0 for 2 today, 3 for 11 in the series. Eighth best average, eighth and run scored in the National League starting today's play for the Met second baseman, as well as being the number one. Fielding percentage second baseman in the National League. And a strike on the outside corner. One ball, one strike. For Beck, it's almost like spring training all over again. To work back in the game condition. Alfonso's one for eight off him in his career off Beck. Two on, one out. And a one two count. Sammy Sosa playing a shadow center field today. Normally the right fielder playing center today. You can see him it's almost like a straight line across the outfield. 
Usually it'll have some arc into it, but Sammy playing very shallow. That wind blowing straight in for center field. And the center fielders yesterday were probably playing 20 to 30 feet deeper than Sammy's playing today. Beck throwing, base runners need to be on their toes. He throws a fork ball, sometimes ends up in the dirt. Fastball there. Beck used to be a power overpowering typical bullpen closer. He does not have that overpowering speed anymore. He has to mix it up. He's got a good fastball, but he'll throw that fork ball, split fingered pitch, and a slider more often than he used to. 2 2 delivery. In the dirt on that one, 3 and 2. Fans getting a little uneasy. Well, three and two to Henderson, three and two to Edgardo Alfonso. Well, when a pitcher goes to a lot of three and two counts, he will tell you what he feels about his stuff. He doesn't like it. Conf the confidence factor. Three two. See if he comes with heat. I think Tommy's at a point in his career where he is really afraid to throw the fastball in a fastball situation. Huh? Three, yeah, three and two. I say if he's, if he's throwing in essence. A lot of times you're throwing wish pitches. Yep. You know, you're throwing your wish for a line drive, you wish, wish for a ground out. You can tell he just does not have confidence in that pitch. Runners go 3 2, and that's ball four. Throw down, but it didn't matter. The Mets' bases are loaded. So Beck has walked two coming on in relief. Now the Mets get the middle of the order, and the booze for Jim Riggleman who makes his way out. The Riggleman's having a pretty heated discussion with Jeff Nelson. If they were arguing about the pitch, I don't know what they're arguing about. That looked like it was way inside to Alfonso. Saw Nelson tell him, go to the mound. You see Nelson? Yep, get out there. Go out there. What are you doing here? He can't be arguing balls and strikes. If he were, he'd be thrown out of the ball game. He may be saying something about, you know, get off my catch. If he argued balls and strikes there, he's out of the ball game. But that pitch, that three and two pitch, didn't even look close. So Beck, who was back, is now gone. A single flyed out. Jim Riggleman brings on the 23 year old left hander. 46th appearance. His job is to get Olerud. One away. Fastball is down low. Two balls, no strikes. Beck came out of there a third of an inning. One hit, two walks off him. And the Mets with a chance right here to get back. Cubs leading at 2-0. Ordonez at third, Henderson at second, Alfonso at first. And Olerud, one for four, lifetime off already. It takes the strike. John's hitting 255 off left-handers, 323 off right-handers this year. Felix already is very tough on left-handed hitters. This is down low and there is no place to put him three and one. That's with a chance for the big inning. Ordonez had the single. Anderson got the walk and Alfonso got a walk. Three one. And drill by Olerud into the corner. Let Allen has got to chase it down. Alfonso will come to third base, make the turn and hold. Now starts again and holds. Two in. Game tied. Olerud a two RBI double. And they'll be charged to Beck. John Olerud does it again. You can just smell it and see it coming. All the 2 old pitches, 3-2 counts, etc. And John Olerud right in the driver's seat and sit on that fastball. Already it fell behind him. And he sits on the fastball and gets it. Drills it in that right field corner. Olerud now is 63 runs batted in. Jim Riggleman. Strategy backfires. He will walk Robin Ventura intentionally to load the bases again with Daryl Hamilton on deck. The seventh intentional pass issued to Robin Venturi. He is one behind Piazza in that department on the Mets. 
So still one away. Mets have tied the ball game at two. Bases loaded for the second time in the inning, and Daryl Hamilton coming up. Hamilton one for two. The single. Joining the Mets today. Deal made yesterday with Colorado, 34 years old. Gap hitter. Batting 304 on the season. Felix Heredia trying to get a ground ball. It's the fastball for a two strike count. Hamilton two for four off Heredia in his career. Heredia working a little too fast for Hamilton's pleasure and he stepped out. That's now with four hits Cubs with six. Hamilton takes it. Well yesterday we talked about the fact the walks just killed the New York Mets. There were eight walks surrendered seven of them scored. Farnsworth walked only one in his five innings. Beck walked two in a third of an inning. One of those has scored and one's at third base. Hamilton, he's got one to left field. Rodriguez has to play it in front. Late start, Alfonso. Station to station. Mets lead at 3 2. First RBI is a Met for Darrell Hamilton. The Chicago Cubs playing way around the left field and trying to defense Darrell Hamilton and playing them probably deeper than they should. Just a contact hit. Line drive to left field. And Alfonso will make sure that it falls in. You can see the left hit fielder Henry Rodriguez is playing pretty deep on that ball against Hamilton. Sedano base is loaded. So Beck responsible for all three runs. Jim Riggleman again sees the bullpen. Cough it up at least for now. One strike pitch by Heredia. Sedano the switch hitter takes it away. One to one. Terry Mulholland was supposed to start today for the Cubs. He was traded to Atlanta. Along with Jose Hernandez the shortstop. For three minor leaguers. So Farnsworth who pitched two and a third on Friday started the game and pitched well. They took him out two nothing lead and here in this inning the Mets have gotten three. No salamis for Sedano yet in his young career. One two delivery infield halfway swung on a miss. Already he gets the strikeout. Take a look at the pitch from Heredia, breaking ball, and Sedano a much better hitter left-handed than he is right. He has a much longer swing from the right-hand side. His left-handed swing is very short, very crisp. His right-handed swing totally different. Big, long swing, and way out in front of the breaking ball. Now there are two down. Todd Pratt. You know, you almost, and I. We haven't seen uh, Sedano play enough, Tom, but almost looks like he is one of those players who might want to think about not switch hitting, at least in certain situations. Well, he's got such great speed from the other side. He's got a great stroke from the left side, great speed from the left side. Just leave him on that left side, let him put the ball to play against left handers. Yeah. They hit it on the ground, say, throw me out of the game. He has that kind of speed to be able to do it. One ball, one strike count on Pratt, starting catcher today. He has struck out, grounded out, ninth man up in the inning. That started this with a Ray Ardonia single. A couple of walks by Beck, both have scored. Base is still loaded here with two down. Felix Heredia, one and two. Heredia will mix it up. He's got a good fastball. Slider. 
change up but rarely uses it. Dan Serafini and Steve Rain. Rain's up for the second time in the bullpen for the Cubs. One two delivery with two away. That one drilled to left. Rodriguez and Adam ball. Brad hit it hard with right at him. So the Mets pick up three runs. They do it on three hits and a couple of walks and have taken a 3 2 lead. Look, game's in progress. And now Leiter with a career high 12 strikeouts and only one walk now is a one run lead. Hang with them. Hill, Ordonez, or Ventura. Base hit. Infield single on the chopper. Give him to him. I give you him. That looked like trouble from the start. Hill did not get a good jump out of the box, but it looked like it could have been a little two car pile up there between Ventura and Ordonez. And you knew that Robert Ventura could sense Ordonez right there. And it's either you make it or don't play there. No chance to glove it. You got one shot at it, barehanded, and throw it within one step. And you might get a runner like Hill who does have good speed. Those infielders, they've got eyes in the back of their heads. They know that the other infielder is right behind him. And no question that Ventura could sense Ordonez coming right in on his left. Henry Rodriguez, seven hits for the Cubs now, and hitting them at 7 5, but trailing a run. Rodriguez, he's not had a particularly good series. One for nine, 0 for one today in a walk. Waves on the lighter delivery, one and one. And the newest Met is on hand, Billy Taylor. Literally just ran down to the bullpen. Arrived after the game had started from Oakland. 26 saves, fourth best in the American League. Will be a middle reliever, closer if needed. Saying, uh, hi, I'm Billy Taylor. He got a six o'clock, <coughs> excuse me, a six o'clock flight this morning to get here to Chicago. Billy Taylor and I don't play piano. Maybe he does. Billy Taylor the great pianist of course that's not the same Billy Taylor two ball one strike out big cut by Rodriguez two and two away from him not even close couple of swings that Henry Rodriguez has had and doesn't even look like he's close to the ball now lighter can be really tough on the left handers when he's got that slider going. 3 2 just missed. Rodriguez lifetimes had only one hit off lighter and eight at bats. Cubs trying to get this game tied up again or a lead. Here in the sixth inning, as what had been a pitcher's duel is now beginning to turn into a Wrigley affair. But the wind is still blowing into them. Throw to first, all the route over, and not a big lead for Glenn Allen Hill. Three ball, two strike count again by Leiter. And he waved at it. 13 strikeouts for L. Leiter. Two of them on Rodriguez. Another breaking ball. Look back to Slider. Maybe the cutter. They're both very similar from Al Leiter. And not even close. You can see the rear end was in it. That dugout wasn't close to home plate. He was gone. And that one, Gaetti pulls foul, broke the bat. One strike count on Gary Gaetti. He led back. Now Leiter has walked only one in this game. We go with the 13 strikeouts. Just hung with it. One bad pitch, a couple of bad pitches to Alexander, the one he gave up, Mickey Morandini rather, gave up the triple on, and then Alexander got an RBI. Grace drove him home from second. Cubs got those in the bottom half of the fifth, and the Mets came back with three in the sixth. Diety, one strike count. Diety has piled up some. Big time numbers in his career. Gary 
Gaetti in games played is right up there among the leaders. 2,260 games at third base, third highest in Major League history. Brooks Robinson, the all time leader, 2,870, and Greg Nettles at 24 12, and then Gaetti, 2,260 here today. And in those games, there's the average. The reason the games vary because he's played position other than third. Not very often. One ball, two strike count. A great play he made yesterday on the little play out in front of home plate. He totally decoyed Roger Sedeno. All he thought Sedeno would get. The guy that he was going to first faked it and got him at home plate. He's a Tim kind of player that they're going to get Sean Dunstan. Veteran player knows the little things about the game. Sean Dunstan is 36 years old, right handed batter. He'll join the Mets probably tomorrow in Milwaukee. Gaetti now 40 years old, 267 career hitter. Up high. Kind of interesting on Gaetti, the game's played when he reaches the 2,500 mark, which he should this year, needs 38 more games. He'll become only the 40th player ever to have played 2,500 games. I'd, I'd have lost that quiz. Me too. You'd think a lot more than that, wouldn't you? Yep. Swung on, foul back again. That's in Major League history. Yeah, that's Only high. 39. Uh, you'd have got me on that one. And a guy like Eddie, who was, when we came in for this series, hitting under 200, you wonder, 40 years old, is this the last couple of months of his career? The Chicago Cup ball club is going to be remade, has to be remade. They're an older club, a club that can only beat you when they hit the home run. I mean, that's a simplistic statement, but that's the way they are built. They are built to win when they hit the ball out of the ballpark. Riggleman loves the veterans. Gaetti still plays decent third. Runner goes and foul back. Hill took off on that one with a three ball, two stake count again on Gaetti. Eddie Lynch, the GM of the Chicago Cup team, former pitcher, of course, with the Mets, and former assistant GM under Joe McIlvain in New York with the Mets. Now the GM here. He was over there talking to Steve Phillips earlier. Walked him. And they were together for about 20 minutes. It looks like Eddie Lynch is talking on one of the local TV radio stations here. But Steve Phillips and Eddie Lynch were locked up in conversations. That man, Steve Phillips, the general manager, we has been on the phone the last half an hour. I've been keeping my eye on him. Got more work to do. Trading deadline's gone, but that doesn't mean you can't trade. That's right. You can get guys through waivers. What a lot of teams will do right now is put their entire roster on waivers. See how many guys go through. That's what they've done in recent years. And that clears if they clear everybody there's the Mets second newest addition in the bullpen he got here at the start of the game Chuck McElroy he can throw a lot of innings left handed he was here for the start of the game he will give some relief to those guys in the bullpen and Turk Wendell. Dennis Cook, especially those two guys, need some relief. They need somebody else to eat up some innings for them. Benito Santiago, Mets leading by one. One down here. The Cubs have two on. Lighter. Santiago, one hopper. Rare Donez, and they'll turn two. Taylor made on that one. No runs, a base hit. And the Cubs unable to get one home as Al Leiter continues to get it. And the Mets leading it by a score of 3 2 as they have come back again from the 2 0 deficit in this game to go on top. Net fans, don't forget Todd Hundley returning to Shea Stadium with the Dodgers. Davey Johnson, it'll be a four game set starting on Friday. On Saturday, adults will get a green Mets cap celebrating Irish night. Hope you'll join in. 718 507 TIXX, Irish night. Let's shake Saturday night.
Lots of great Irish music. Green caps for the adults. Ray Ardonia's up. Felix already up. On for the Cubs. Stays on. Missed outside with that for ball. Back charged with the three runs on a hit and two walks in the third of an inning. Already has given up a couple of hits. The two RBI double to Olerud and a single and an RBI for Hamilton, but the runs all went against Beck. Ardonius started that inning off in the sixth with a single and scored. Three for ten in this series. And already misses with it. Two and one. That's on to Milwaukee for the three games there. Tomorrow night, Rick Reed and Adeo Nomo. Reached and fouled it back. Two balls, two strikes. Boy, what a glorious day here in Chicago. Unbelievable that from Friday to this Sunday, the weather would have changed this dramatically. From 117 degrees on the field Friday night to probably 83, 84 today. 2 2 Ordonez again outside part of the plate. Adding Daryl Hamilton the Mets now have the leaders in fielding percentage at second short and center. Not bad up the middle. Speaking of up the middle Sammy Sosa. One away. That ball hit a long way by Ray Adornias and yesterday they've probably been off the wall. Potentially even a home run, maybe not, but it would have made the wall yesterday. Well, Don is not great power, but put some sting into that one. There are the flags. Straight in off Lake Michigan. We we're talking before the game to Val Jackson and Mookie Wilson. And Mookie was hitting us up again for that entrance to the Hall of Fame. He's not going to let up. Oh, no. No. But one of the things you're talking about on that bench before the game, Cookie Rojas, it's always the same guys kind of out there watching everybody take batting practice. And Fergie Jenkins came up, his name. There's Cookie. Jenkins, the Hall of Famer, great right hander for the Chicago Cubs. And the great sinker ball that he had here. Talking about seven years in a row that he won 20 games. There's a pennant for Fergie Jenkins. And the great sinker that he had. And he knew how to pitch in this ballpark. He got a lot of ground balls, Fergie Jenkins did. And he could strike you out, too. He certainly he could. He could throw hard. But he knew in this ballpark to be successful, you got to keep the ball on the ground. And that's exactly what he did. He had over 3,000 strikeouts. One ball, two strike count on Al Leiter. And Leiter fouls that one off. Al's had a sacrifice and has popped up. One ball, two strike count, one away. And this ballpark in the summer we've mentioned as we said yesterday this ballpark not as great a hitters ballpark as everyone thinks. Already with a strikeout because of that cold weather at the beginning of the year when the wind blows in. You know it's only been a couple of weeks but already people are talking about the WB's newest comedy movie stars. Harry Hamlin. Early in the year late in the year Wrigley is really a pitcher's ballpark. It's going to be very cold and the wind in. Be very cold in April. Ooh. Real cold because that wind, you're always going to get wind in Chicago. Actually, the wind blows with more gusto and more often in Boston than Chicago, but the nickname is here and is owned by the city of Chicago. But you get a lot of blustery days here, and especially er early in April, late in April. And one of the cold, it is, can be the hottest ballpark you play in, it can be the coldest ballpark that you play in. As a player. Anderson to second. Morandini, nice backhand stop. That was tagged. Bottom of the seventh inning in the number nine spot. Good one hitting at 239. He's really had a struggle at the plate over the last three weeks. 0 for 4 in yesterday's game. Two hits in his last 34 at bats. And Leiter's inside to him, 2 and 0. Morandini and Alexander do up for the Cubs with the Mets on top 3 2. The fans settle back after the seventh inning stretch. 
First 3 0 count, I think Lighters had today. And would you believe it, Dennis Cook throwing in the bullpen? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I would believe it. <laughs> Pitched in the game yesterday. Sammy Sosa took him deep, and he's out there again throwing today. Lighter, a career high 13 strikeouts, two walks in the game. Cubs have picked up seven hits off him. And he comes back from 3 0 to 3 2. One of the things you were talking about early, Gary, earlier, Gary, in the game is the number of deep counts that Al Lighter goes to. You know, go to three and two, three and one, three and two a lot. Whoa! Good one. Leaned away, and it was a strike. That was a beautiful pitch by Lighter. The one thing that Al does, he gets himself a lot of three and two counts. And when you do that, all of a sudden you get to the seventh inning and you're over 100 pitches for the ball game. That's a fastball on the inside part of the plate, no doubt. That's a good pitch. Not only was it too close to take, a strike on the inside part of the plate. 14 K's and Mickey Morandini up. One of the feeling things that I think Lyle Leiter has to work on is to get his pitch count down so he can get himself and the bullpen and the ball club into the eighth inning. He's over 130 pitches already, and we are in the seventh inning. Yeah, he's got a lot of strikeouts. But you can get strikeouts and keep your, your pitch count down. And I think one of the things that Al has to, to work on, being the ace of a staff, to get himself through the seventh inning and still be at that 85 and 90 pitch mark so he can take the club potentially to the eighth, not only the eighth, but the ninth inning as well. I think that's extremely important for a guy who's your number one starter. One ball, two strike count on Morandini, and he's gone. 15 strikeouts. Four more than his previous career high for Leiter. And you've got potential for major league record here. Add him up. Third strikeout for Morandini on the day. He had the triple, remember, back in the fifth inning. Other than that, he struck out three times. The only starter not to have been struck out today is Mark Grace. Leiter has had at least two strikes and two strikeouts in every inning except the sixth. And a one strike count on Manny Alexander. Alexander's worked him hard. He struck him out, but he's delivered two singles and an RBI. Five for 13, lifetime off lighter. Pratt. He's got it. Good inning for Al Leiter. Retires the side in order. He's had the lead. Mets took it away in the sixth inning. Leiter has gone the distance for New York with 15 strikeouts, two walks. Beck is the pitcher of record right now, and here is Don Serafini out of the bullpen, fourth pitcher for the Cubs. Edgardo Alfonso leading it off for the Mets. Tander Serafini gets the foul ball and a two strike count. For Edgato in the game, a walk in that sixth inning, and he came around to score 0 for 2 today, but 3 for 11 in the series. Olderud and Ventura do up in the Mets half of the eighth. Off the fist, stays at two strikes. Serafini, both a starter and a reliever. He's made four starts. His 35th appearance, though. Right now, the Cubs are just trying to cover their bullpen. And they've had to use it so extensively. Most of these are coming on for an inning for Jim Riggleman, and then he tries to get them out of there. 
to have somebody available for the next day. Serafini on for Heredia worked an inning in two thirds, no runs, two hits, and two strikeouts. One of the things about that Cubs staff, Gary, he came in here, a couple of people said, well, yeah, the Cubs trade Steve Traxel. Heard his name all over the place. And the way he pitched here the other day, had a big lead on Friday and could not hold it. And the Mets came back and won that game on Friday. And you would think certainly that the front office, Chicago Cub front office, down on Steve Traxel. And I'm telling you, if you've got a warm body and you can throw, you are valuable in the major leagues. Pitching, there is just not enough of it. And warm bodies are valuable. It's one of the advantages the Mets have had all year and the Cubs haven't, that they've had a bullpen that has done a great job for them. Riggleman has not. Alfonso to third guy, and he's going to have to hustle this over. And guys. Steve Traxel is 3 and 14. Got a chance to be a 20 game loser. And had a game the other day. You take a look at the play by Gaetti. Sets boom and get rid of it quickly. What would have happened if Roger Sedano had been running that one? <laughs> They've been at second base. Yeah, infield, infield base hit. Look at that 40 year old arm right there. Yeah. Looks like a short arm batting practice pitcher the way he throws Gary Gaetti now. Grounded to second base by John Olerud, bobbled by Morandini, who doesn't miss many, but he does on that one. And the arrow will be charged on Mickey Morandini. One of the surest hands ever in the game at second base. Well, he does normally have sure hands. He does not have the range of an Edgardo Alfonso, and usually what he gets to, he will make the play. That ball hit very sharply by John Olerud. And O'Rourke, who does not run well, should have been an easy play for Morandini, but he looked up off the ball just at the last second. Toss him an error. Third error of the year, Morandini, and it sets the stage. Maybe O'Rourke to turn will stay on the base hit by Robin Ventura. So with one away, the Mets have runners on at first and second. Mickey Morandini made two errors. May of 98 against Houston. Since then, in 216 games, that is just the fifth error he'd made at second base. And you might be able to understand that if Morandini played an artificial surface where you get all these true hops, but I mean, this infield is a little rugged. You look down on the top of this infield, you see some bare spots in the grass. I mean, it, you, you would think somewhere along the line you got to make more outs than that, more errors than that, excuse me. Darrell Hamilton has already delivered for the Mets in his first game, an RBI single in the sixth. He's two for three. <laughs> Dropped that one in, Alfonso scored. So Hamilton, in what is now the go ahead RBI in this game, in his first game as a Met. Two on and one away. Serafini's delivery is fouled off the other way by Hamilton. Two ball, one strike count on Darrell. So the Mets have three of their four acquisitions on hand. Billy Taylor is here in the bullpen. Chuck McElroy is in the bullpen. In fact, got up and threw earlier. Darrell Hamilton starting the game in center field. And Sean Dunstan is expected to join the team tomorrow in Milwaukee. 2 1 delivery. Check swing. Now, Leiter, Dave Wallace, the pitching coach on the left. Leiter loves to talk the game, seriously talk it. Always. Even when he's pitching. We'll come into the dugout, exchange views and comments of players and coaches. 
and around the clubhouse. He is one of the most interested players in the game of baseball I've seen. He wants to know why. He wants to know opinions. What do you think? Why does that happen? He may have his own ideas. He just wants. He's not against hearing somebody else's opinion or somebody else's idea, just to compare it to his. Hamilton down to first. Mike Grace, great stop, fair ball. That saves at least a run. Runners move up, two down. You know, you may say that's a great play, and it may be. A, it's, it is an understatement in the sense if you look at the at bats that Hamilton has had. There is not one ball in the entire course of this game that he has pulled to the right side. And when he does on this pitch, it is just inside the line. And Mark Grace still made the play. That is an outstanding defensive play. Everything that, that Daryl Hamilton has tried to put in play, he's tried to hit to the left side. And that one just inside the line. What a play by Grace at first. Bear that in mind as this game goes along, depending on what Sedano does here. But Serafini, if he can get out of this inning, it will be at the hands of Grace. I knew that was coming. <laughs> I know I was waiting for you. <laughs> I'll give you an error on that one. Two down. <laughs> and a one ball, one strike count on Sedano. He's 0 for 2 in a walk today. Two in scoring position. We mentioned before Sedano has been outstanding. In fact, among the regulars, the best in average with runners in scoring position coming into today's game. Then he goes to second on this one. Laurendini. So we will keep an eye on that play made by Mark Grace on Hamilton's ground ball. See whether or not it becomes a deciding factor in this game. He's gone two for four in his first game as a Met. Our Jeep game summary Rod Beck third of an inning three runs on one hit is the pitcher of record right now and for the Mets the starters out of there and the Mets go to the bullpen. Yeah. Wendell. Al Leiter gone for the day and potentially we will not see a new strikeout record sent set here today. The potential 21 and the guy that said it was with the Chicago Cubs shares it with a couple other pitchers in the big leagues. And Turk Wendell will turn it up a takeover for Al Leiter. Leiter with 138 pitches. That's why he is not back out here to pitch the eighth inning. So you will see Turk Wendell pitch the eighth. And if things go correctly, then you will probably see Armando Benitez pitch the ninth. That's the plan. Mike Grace leads it off. Grace three for three. Double two singles RBI Sosa and Hill to follow so for Turk Wendell obviously beginning short this is a huge out. <laughs> Mark Grace is retired. <laughs> How big is it. Just about as big as the biceps of the one man walking up to home plate right now. Huge out. Sosa coming, you don't want anybody on. Fans bowing to Sammy. Sosa's been held off the board today, 0 for 3. And Wendell gets the slider in the inside corner. It's the second consecutive pitch that Sammy Sosa has not liked. He did not like that slider and the strike call by Jeff Nelson. He did not like the strike three call against him in the fifth inning. Two for three lifetime off Wendell without a home run. By the way, the strikeouts by Leiter 15. That's the most in a game since David Cohn in 91 had 19 for the Mets. Well, we'll watch the rest of this game, hoping for his 10th win. Sosa, wow, did that catch Todd Pratt. Down he went, up he got. That was a pretty good fastball, pretty good swing. And Todd Pratt is no small man to knock him off his feet. You got to hit him pretty good. He's a tough cookie. Well, 
Look at it again. Good fastball. Boom. Right hand of the jaw and almost knocked him right on his back. Two strike count on Sosa. Wendell ahead here. Got him to chase one away. Kirk Wendell in the opener of this series worked an inning, struck out one, didn't give up anything. Two strike delivery to Sosa, way outside with a slider, one ball, two strikes. Wendell just all over the place out there on the mound, kicking up the dirt, slamming down the rosin bag. Talking to himself, settle down, settle down. He'll do that all the time. There's his emotions on his sleeves out there. Strike three call, and if Sosa didn't like the others, he's not going to like this. He may not like it, but it was a strike, and I think he knew it. Last time was questionable. This time, because Wendell, the slider pitcher, he might be looking away. And got fooled by the inside pitch. Yeah, he had to be looking away to jump away from that pitch. So an 0 for 4 game for Sosa. Now Glenn Allen Hill, one down, or two down, rather. Foul back by Hill. Wendell's up on the count. Dirk Wendell, of course, pitched here in Chicago. 93 through 97 before he was acquired by the Mets during the 97 season. He was up and down in the Chicago organization. Some of it rehab work. Two strike delivery. Missed outside with that one ball, two strikes on Hill, who had a single his last time up, one for three. You can see Todd Pratt out there in the Outside part of the plate gets his leg way down. I've never been a proponent of that. I don't like that at all. Because what you're doing is showing the hitter which side of the plate you're going to work on, and the pitcher does not have to defend against. I mean, the hitter doesn't have to defend against the other half of the plate. Well, he took one there right off the hand. Now look, this is two pitches ago, way out there. See him sitting way up. Now the if you think about the last pitch that he threw, that he just fouled off. Look at this position. He wants a high, high fastball, way up high. Ooh. And one thing that is not done these days is coaches relaying to the hitters what the catcher is doing to give away pitches. Simply, hitters don't want it anymore. And it used to be common practice 15 or 20 years ago when hitters would take that piece of information. And they don't want it anymore. I don't know why. I can't understand it. You sit there and you watch the catcher. In this situation of this at bat, he'll tell you where they're going. Well, he went outside. He got that one. Got record earlier. I thought you would uh, lead me right into it, but you well, I, magnanimous in your I, attitude. I, you I, deferred. <laughs> I tiptoed around it the best I could. Yes, you did. Without being totally blatant. 19 for Cone and uh, Tom Seaver. 19. 1970. Now the consecutive strikeouts in that game were what? Ten. And the pitch on each of them. <laughs> Ten consecutive K's in that ball game. I was that was to end the game too. It was the last. That was last in this the last out in the sixth inning, and then seven, eight, nine. But somebody mentioned that the other day, and I said it was a two to one ball game. You Known as a game that I knew I had strikeout potential, and I and I'd given up a home run in that game. I was trying to close it and trying to win. You gave up a home run. Oh, I know. Excuse me. I can't believe. And that. those ten strikeouts, there weren't too many three ball counts. No, I bet there weren't. Now. No, we did not go to three and two. We didn't do three and two then. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you had the arm to have ten consecutive to end the game. Here is Todd Pratt working against Steve Rain. Rain was called up today. He is 24 years old out of Los Angeles. Working in the minor leagues this year. He just threw his first major league pitch. He's been in the minor seven years. 
Todd Pratt first batter he's going to face at the major league level. So Steve Rain on the mound for the trades that were made yesterday. They had to fill a spot on the roster. Sosa. Pratt is retired one away in the ninth inning. Rain was three and one. 40 relief appearances at double A Tennessee. Ironically in 88 98 rather he played triple A this year he was playing double A. And a relief pitcher virtually all of his. Professional career. Ray Ardonias. One for three with a single and a run scored. Mets have a 3 2 lead. You're looking ahead. Armando Benitez is warming up to come on for a save. Rodriguez, Gaetti, and Santiago will be due up for Chicago. Sammy Sosa the other way. Snow combed it. It's fun to watch offensively and defensively. And it looks like he misplaced that ball. I think half of that was stayed to stay out of a collision with Glenn Allen Hill in right field. That wind just pushing the ball a little bit away from him. He is some athlete, that guy. Derek Wendell will come out of the game for a pinch hitter. Matt Franco. The two down and nobody on in the top of the ninth inning. Mets one inning was the sixth off Rod Beck as they got three runs on three hits and left the bases loaded that inning. Mets have stranded only five in the game, four in scoring. Grounded a second, Morandini. He got him. A good inning for Rain in his major league debut as he retires the Mets in order. Now we go to the ninth inning. Bottom of a great day here at Wrigley weather-wise and a fine ball game. Take a look at our GM turning point of the ball game. Newest member of the Mets, Daryl Hamilton. RBI single sixth inning. Alfonso scored and right now it is the go ahead RBI and second in the National League Armando Benitez this is 54th appearance so they get their work out of the bullpen Benitez one and two with an earned run average of just over two 2.01 and when you look at his line 53 and two thirds innings pitch 88 strikeouts 88 and 53 innings. That will tell you you're going to get some heat from Armando Benitez. Got his 11th save in that game on Friday. Even though he had to struggle a bit. In fact, the last out was a ground ball he knocked down. Almost couldn't find it in time at his feet. Henry Rodriguez, center field. Just missed. Hamilton hauls it in. Two pitches, two fly balls, one out, one in. You wonder on the balls hit to the outfield, is it a line drive or a fly ball? And that was kind of an in between. You didn't know if the wind would keep it in the ballpark. More of a line drive than a fly ball, and home run number 19. The thing about that, Gary, is that a first pitch home run and Gary Gaetti 
first pitch with a pretty good swing and just popped it up. So Mondo Benitez will have his fifth blown save of the year. Has it. Now Jeff Reed hit hitting pinch hitting for Santiago. And this is one thing that the New York Mets were concerned about. John Franco of course on the disabled list. And how many times can you go to the bullpen and have your closer who is Armando Benitez is that now have him have have him have his best stuff when he gets to the mound. How much work does he have to do. And that is an issue. And that's the thing that Steve Phillips has tried to address. By going out and getting some help for that bullpen. Four home runs off Armando Benitez on the year in 54 innings work. There's the man who's tied the game up, Henry Rodriguez. Two hits in this series. They both have been home runs. 19 on the year. Reed with a 2 1 count. 2 and 2. Bottom of the ninth, the Cubs have come back to tie it. So the great performance by Al Leiter. Two runs, seven hits over seven, is a no decision appearance. That takes Beck off the hook. Now Benitez and Rain are the pitchers of record. Fastball missed inside, 3 2. Tyler Houston's on deck to pinch hit for Steve Rain, the pitcher. Benitez out of the stretch with a 3 2 delivery. That's going to be a base hit by Reed. Well, with one out, Jeff Reed gets a pinch hit single. Yet another 3 and 2 count. And we've said it so many times in this series the advantage goes to the hitter. Armando Benitez with terrific, terrific stuff when he is on. And when you see two balls that have been hit as hard as they have been hit in this inning against him, then you wonder is he on the verge of having something less because of the fatigue factor? There's Dennis Cook. He starts to get loose in the Met bullpen. He pitched yesterday. Bench hitter Tyler Houston. And the fastball in for his strike. Left handed hitters coming up here against Benitez. Houston, a backup catcher, third baseman, first baseman. He's played them all. Outside by Benitez. Houston won for two in the, on the occasions he's faced Benitez before. Tyler Houston. Cubs have tied it up. Potential winning run at first base with one down. Get cut on it, follow it right straight back. Benitez coming into this game, left handers have hit better against him, but not much. 178, right handers 124, giving up four home runs now. Two to right handers, two to left handers. One two, runner at first base. Stays that way. Two delivery. Strike him out. Call third strike. Think Tom, you know, there were people who were kind of booing John Franco, even at Shea. But he was 19 for 20 and save opportunities. That's a that's a professional big time closer number. John, of course, whether he'd come back or not remains an issue. You got a mind Benitez now, eleven for sixteen. And that starts to mount up in blown saves. And they are two different types of pitchers, too. Yep. Armando Benitez is a stand up straight pitcher, straight up pitcher, and his power comes from his arm. And fatigue is a factor. 
doesn't generate a lot of strength from the lower half of his body. Thank you, Moore and Dini. One on one. It's the other part of it. If he's your closer and you're just learning how much rest he does need. First, first year with your ball club. So how much how much rest do we have to give this guy in between innings? Is it innings or is it pitches? Marandini to center field. Darrell Hamilton. He's got it. We're going extra. So the home run by Henry Rodriguez leading off the inning has tied this ball game up to the 10th inning 3 3. Well, the fans of Wrigley getting a treat here as Cub fans as they come back to tie the ball game up. They've blown a 2 nothing lead. Now 3 3. Tyler Houston's going to stay in the ball game. He'll play at third base with Gaetti out of there. Jeff Reed, who pinch hit for Santiago, stays in that position as the catcher, checking the sun there. And Terry Adams, their closer, is out of the bullpen. Hoping he doesn't have to go many innings. Boy, we've seen in this three game set all of these pitchers a couple of times already. Adams is three and two. And his 28th appearance for the Cubs, the 3.2 earned run average. As Gary said the other day, the closer of the future for the Chicago Cubs. Pitcher of the moment. 3 3 game, 10th inning. Mets it, have gone 3 and 2 in extra innings, and the Cubs 3 and 1. When you have a pitching staff that's struggling in the way the Chicago Cubs, yes, the pitcher of the moment. Who's the best pitcher you got? The one we got on the mound right one now. right out there. Anderson takes it inside. Ricky's had a walk over three today. Batting at 312 on the year and the head on the count two and all on Terry Adams. He'd love a leadoff walk here and he may get it. Reed getting up to say come on baby get it in here. Three and oh. Mets have had only three walks today. Farnsworth gave up one and Beck two. Two by Beck scored. Chicago's had only two walks today off lighter. That's all the Met pitchers have given. And on this wind blowing in day, we've had just the one home run by Rodriguez. And there's the walk. A leadoff walk by Terry Adams. And Ricky Henderson is on. Oh my, says Jim Riggleman. And Benito Santiago is not the catcher of record. Jeff Reed will get the signs from Riggleman on what they want the pitcher to do here with Henderson on first base. Gardo Alfonso. Oh for three and a walk and a run scored. Adams over. Stepping off the lead. There now with Grace holding the bag. A lot of those signs coming from the bench. Obviously, Jim Riggleman wants to know what Ricky's going to do. It looked like Ricky was trying to break and guess on the first hold by the pitcher. Those signs will come to the catcher. The catcher will relay into the pitcher about hold, throw over there, throw over there. You got to look for Ricky to run somewhere. Taken, Edgardo Alfonso. A lot of times the things that happen, Gary, is that they concentrate so much on the base runner. And you get behind your hitter at the plate, make bad pitches to him. That's all the little things that a guy like a Ricky Henderson or a Roger Sedano, how they affect the game even though they're not at the plate. Reed has only thrown out 22% of base stealers against him. That's well below the major league average. Terry Adams strike on the inside corner base dealers are two for two off Adams. Well the two managers extra inning games here making decisions on what to do offensively Valentine defensively Riggleman. One ball one strike Edgardo Alfonso who was an outstanding hit and run man. Because he's such a good contact hitter. 
tenth inning. Game tied. Adams appeared in the ball game yesterday, worked an inning and a third, striking out two and didn't give up a hit. One of the great parts of the game, because you know something is going to happen here. It's going to be hit and run, going to be steal. Garner's going to try to put the ball in the play on the right side, hit the ball in the hole over there. The magic thing wins it going to happen. Nasty looking pitch, one and two. You can see with that swing that Edgardo was certainly trying to hit the ball in the hole between first and second between Grace and Morandini. Question Will Valentine run Henderson? Is he on his own? And if he runs him, will he wait till there's one out potentially to run him? He wants to get him obviously to scoring position. Five throws over to first base. Terry Adams, 26 years old. This is one aspect of the game he really had to work on in the offseason. Base stealers ran against him last year at will. He's trying to improve with that kind of a move by varying his deliveries to first base. He's a ground ball pitcher, predominant ground ball pitcher with a sinking fastball, hard slider. Pretty good fastball in the 90s, and that goes down. There goes Henderson. Big jump. Throw down. That goes into center field. Henderson gets up and will go to third base. A stolen base and an error puts Henderson at third with nobody out. Now, Ricky, the entire time at first base looked like he was trying. To time the pitcher, he does not have the blazing speed that he had when he was younger. But to accumulate those stolen bases, you have to be able to read the pitcher. When he guessed it just right, that is just smart base running. You get caught once in a while. No chance for Reed. A bad throw by Reed. Infield in. Alfonso pops it up on the 2 2. Foul ball. Ricky now with 28 stolen bases on the season, caught 11 times. The Mets with a huge chance here in light of Anderson's ability to motor over to third to get the lead back in the 10th. Infield try and make a play on a ground ball. Alfonso goes three and two. One for six lifetime off the 26 year old reliever of the Cubs for Alfonso. Three two delivery. That'll get it in. Rodriguez the catch Anderson the tag throw will come and a good one but not in time Ricky did not slide that was ended up being pretty darn close and the Mets have the lead 4 3 sack fly Alfonso no way that play is that close I could not believe it yes Ricky did not slide back to the bag. The catch and he takes off. Good jump from third. Just an excellent throw by left field by from Rodriguez. Looks like Ricky may have let up the last two. Maybe he's decoyed by the catcher, huh? I was looking at John Olerud to see whether or not Olerud was telling him to slide in the on deck position. Didn't look like John was telling him to slide. Anderson scores, and the Mets have the lead 4-3. RBI to Alfonso. He is getting a bunch of static right now from Mike Piazza. That may have been just a decoy job by the catcher, Reed. Okay, here's the catch and the throw by the left fielder. Watch the catcher. See if the catcher is playing cat and mouse out there. No, he was ready to receive the ball. Short stop. Olerud's ground ball will be played. Manny Alexander, two down. That's Olerud's job, of course, as the on deck batter to let Ricky know as he comes in whether or not he needs to slide or can stand up. And it didn't look like, I think John may have got caught off on that one, believing it would be an easy score. 
It looked like Olerud was not up near the plate giving any kind of signal. I thought it was a no, was a no break. Yeah. Ricky running, no chance. He'd have no chance. They missed him by just half a step. So a run in here in the tenth inning. Two down, nobody on. Robin Ventura with a base at his last time up. One for three today. Six for 13 in the series against Chicago. Now hitting at 296. 1 0 delivery with two down is there. 1 0 1. Mondo Benitez will be coming back out for the Mets to try for the win in the bottom of the tenth. Alexander Grace and Sosa do up. Suddenly off that pitch, foul tipped into the Met one and two. the gap right center field Hill will not have a play on it falls in for the base hit boy did that get held up by the wind Robin Ventura on with a single I think some of the outfielders are playing today like the way we're playing the first two days when the wind was blowing out you got to change your defensive position granted Robin Ventura a big swing did not hit that ball well but the outfield still playing pretty deep that's why the Mets got that run Earlier in the game, when Hamilton hit that ball to left field, Rodriguez is playing way too deep. Hamilton back up again with two down. Mets now with seven hits in the game. Cubs have nine. Mets have the lead, 10th inning. Terry Adams, 1 0 delivery. Hamilton fouls it off. He joined us late in the game, of course. Hamilton joining the team today in the Trade with Colorado. Billy Taylor here from Oakland in the bullpen. McElroy in the Colorado deal in the bullpen as well for the Mets. And Dunstan will join the team tomorrow in Milwaukee. Sean Dunstan and Greg Paquette from the Mets going the other way with the deal with the Cardinals. Lots of folks out there in the bullpen right now. Two new arms. Take it inside. Close, but not quite. Two balls, two strikes. He's got a chance to be a pretty good hitter, too, Gary. He's on the bat pretty yeah, good. He's he got a chance to be a hitter. And you give a good hitter up, you get a good veteran player like Dunstan. You get something, you got to give something up. 2-2 two -two to Hamilton and another 3-2 count. So Ventura at first base will be running on the 3 2. Grace moves behind the base runner. Boy, what you just said is this a lesson in there? 3 and 2. All of a sudden, advantage to the hitter, advantage to the base runner. The great base runner's in motion. Conceivably could score on a single. And he walked it. Unbelievable. And you'll see it once in a while. I'm not saying that. It happens, obviously. But you just, we're seeing it time and time and time again. So is he. So basic, so fundamental. Just amazing. Two on, two down. Sedano coming up. Adams has walked two in the tenth inning. And of course, the leadoff walker, Ricky Henderson, is the go ahead run right now. Sedano from his better hitting side against the right hander, Adams. He is 0 for 4 in his appearances against Adams this year, which are his career numbers. Sedano takes the strike, 0 and 2. Talking about Sedano with runners in scoring position, a 365 average coming into this game. I don't think anybody would guess among the Met regulars he would have the best average. With runners in scoring position of any regular net right now. Two strike delivery. That one is out of the game for the Mets and Melvin Moore into left field as we go to the bottom half of the tenth inning. And Amando Benitez faced the middle of this order for the Chicago Cubs. Blew the save, but does have a chance to get the win. He 
be Manny Alexander, Mark Grace, and Sammy Sosa do up. Alexander has had a couple of hits today two singles and an RBI, a run scored, two for four for Manny. He's hitting at 309. Benitez. Outside ball one. Melvin Moore playing very deep in left field. Very deep in left field. And the thinking there, obviously, to cut off the double. Now, Sedano in right field is not all that deep. There you see the outfield and left field. Mora came in for Ricky is really deep. Three and O. Oh. And who's on deck? Big big bats. And who's down in the hole? Bigger bigger bats. Sammy. There's Grace. Three and one. Alexander just standing there looking for the walk. He wants on. There's the hole man, Sammy Sosa. Fastball right there. Credit Benitez came right at him. 3 2. He's come back from the 3 0 and trying to work a little too much for Alexander too quickly. Boy, that's a good piece of fitting right there for him to step out. Armando Benitez says, hey, I know you're trying to get a walk. He's working as quickly as he could. And Manny stepped out. That was a good move on his part. Fights it off. I mean, beneath the last pitch after he threw the second strike, Benita was ready to throw that pitch as soon as he got it back from the catcher. One of the things the hitter has to do too, periodically step out, break up, break up the pitcher's timing if you can. Alexander with a 3-2 again, and he walked it. Manny Alexander is one of the smartest players in the game. He's a bench player, but when he was with the Mets, all of his teammates would always said, this guy knows the game. He knows situations, understand what he needs to do, and generally gets it done, and he's done it here. Lead off, walk. Well, there's Billy Taylor, newest member of the Mets, the closer for Oakland. Up and throwing for the first time. Here's Grace. Ball one. Grace is the only Cub playing today not to have struck out. He has three hits. Double two singles and a ground ball out three for four. Ball two. It's the fastball in for the strike. What do you think, Jim Ruggerman's stomach and Bobby Valentine's stomach? What do you think the pH is in their stomachs today? Yes, High double. acidic content. Man. Base hits, you understand. Three and one. Certain things about pitching that will drive a manager nuts, and you've seen it on both sides. Look at Bobby Valentine just kind of looking away and down while Riggleman paces. There goes Alexander. What is this? He got him. There's a walk. Oh my God. Pratt didn't see the call. I didn't either. I could not believe that. What is Alexander running for? Well, he got it, but there was a walk, so it didn't matter. That is a real discipline. You've got to know when to put on that steel. If, in fact, it came from the bench, and it can't be a surprise to a guy like Mark Grace, it cannot be a surprise to the hitter. He has to know that potentially the three and one, the runner may go, and it's up to you the option. You do not have to swing if you think it's ball four. You can do that. Got a guy that has the back control of Mark Grace. You can see him. He's already off heading to second base with the first base, excuse me, with the ball thrown to second. How about this? 
Taylor is going to come into the game. Amando Benitez not happy about it, but he's walked the first two hitters in the tenth inning. And Billy Taylor acquired in the deal after the game yesterday will make his first Met appearance against Sammy Sosa, tenth inning, two on. Two league leader in home runs. Forty of them. Two of them came yesterday. Billy Taylor, 37 years old, arrived here after the game had started. Sosa and he have never faced each other in a regular season game. And you can see Sosa taking the first pitch, wants to see the release point, wants to see some velocity. What's he got to look at here? And he'll give you one strike. He had 26 saves, fourth in the American League. Off speed, and that's what he throws. He is not a power pitcher. He is a finesse pitcher. A lot of off speed pitches. Opposition was hitting 287 against him with Oakland in 43 appearances, 48 hits, and 43 innings. Sosa in the off speed delivery, one and two. Two on, nobody out. Tenth inning, Mets lead at 4 3. Alexander and Grace, the base runners. Taylor gave up only three home runs in the 43 innings, walked 14, struck out 38 with Oakland. Off the end of the bat, only one play at first. Well, that's not what the fans really wanted or the Cubs but it moves two runners up with one down perfectly done exactly what you would want if you can't get a base hit or a home run from your number four cleanup hitter at least you get them the base runners moved up in the scoring position and now what do you do you got Glenn Allen Hill then you got Henry Rodriguez you'll walk. Hill to set up the double play, a force at every base. Taylor delivers that one whipped foul. I mean whipped. They're going to pitch to him, obviously. You know, walk him, set up the force at every base. And behind the, the on deck circle, Henry Rodriguez. The homer the last time, remember, a left hand hitter. Hill has struck out three times today. Alexander, the lead runner. The Mets will give, they'll give up the tying run, obviously. They're going to play back. Can't give up the winning run. Now they're going to walk him. Wow. So they will give the intentional pass to Hill to get to Henry Rodriguez. And then you'll see Dennis Cook. They did not like that foul ball, I would imagine, on the bench. I don't think Bobby Valentine. And Dave Wallace liked that foul ball at all. So they got to go left hander to left hander. Try to get out of the inning. Try to win a ball game. Billy Taylor, 14 years in the minor leagues, finally got up to the Oakland A's and became their closer. Now here with the Mets. That'll be his first relief appearance. Dave Wallace will come out to get him. Dennis Cook on his way in. Dennis Cook out of the bullpen. Henry Rodriguez at the plate. One for eight. Lifetime off Cook. Strike one, one down. Henry Rodriguez off Benitez, ninth inning. Tied this ball game up. Now he's got a chance to win it. 
Bases loaded. Cook outside to him. One on one. Dennis Cook worked yesterday. Not successfully. Gave up two runs, four hits in an inning. Striking out two, walking none. And that one's taken down low. Two balls, one strike. Got a dove flying right between the pitcher hitter on that last pitch for a pigeon. Thought he was going to land right between the two of them. He's flown away. Two ball, one strike count. Cubs trying to come back and win it here in the tenth. Towering pop up. Olaru, wind blowing, wind blowing. The friendly confines saves an at bat for Rodriguez. Yesterday, you know where that ball is? In his glove. That ball is in his glove, probably back by the coach's box. But again, the wind. A huge element here at Wrigley Field. And this one robs the Mets of a very potentially very important out. The flags have done it again. Two balls, two strikes. Alexander, Grace, and Hill, the base runners for Chicago. Four grand slams in his career. 19 home runs this year, including the one today. Only one away. Two two delivery. Jammed him. You talk about the Met bullpen. You know, we said Turk Wendell, who has pitched in this game already, 56 games now. Benitez, 54 games. Dennis Cook, this is his 51st game. Uh, the first four pitchers in the National League, as far as appearances in games in which they pitch, the Mets own three out of the top four. Dennis Cook said he was happy with the deals to get some help. 2 2 delivery. In the dirt. Base is loaded, one away, 3 2, 10th inning, Mets lead by one. Down to first base. Slow roller too quickly. He'll be charged with an error. The Cubs have come back and tied it again. I think John Olroot was in between whether he was going to go home or go to second base. And try to get the double play. It looked like he peaked right at the last second. And it cost them an out. Whether he would have gotten Alexander at home, I do not know. And maybe that's why the peak to find out which way to go. Jose Nieves, who we have not seen in this series, is up at the plate against Cook. Pinch hitting and he pops it up again. All a route again. How about the wind that blew the ball foul on Rodriguez? Kept his at bat alive. The squibber to first. Game tied at four. And a potential winning run is Mark Grace. Both those pop fouls and on top of the Met dugout, both of them would have been in play yesterday. And the Mets playing a double play depth up the middle. Run is charged to Benitez. He's also responsible for Grace. 0 1 delivery. Nieves fouls it back. One down, bases loaded. Bottom of the 10th. Cubs. One hit, one something away from winning this game if they can get Grace in. The 
Neves waiting on a two strike count. Oof, almost hit him. Stays one ball, two strikes. What a battle these three games have been for these two teams. This is the rubber match. The others were slugfests. Neither team able to put the game away easily, no matter how many runs they scored. Mets won 10 9 Friday, lost 17 to 10 yesterday after tying the game at 9 9. Davis with a one two Dennis Cook to him a grounder to second base they got a turn two. that's one the relay good pick they do we will go to the eleventh inning Mitchell winning run praying that they don't turn two but Ardonia's turned it in a hurry and it's the eleventh inning the error charged to him but it was an earned run as Benitez Charged with two runs in his relief appearance, the homer by Rodriguez on that one in the tenth, and then Olerud made the nice pick to make sure the Mets got that double play to end the inning and send it on to the eleventh. As the Cubs, the great chance, the bases loaded, one down, were only able to get that one run in to tie it up. Bobby Valentine rolled the dice and said, "Yeah, we'll play back for the double play. We are that good up the middle." And a pretty good choice, I would guess, when you've got Adornias and Edgardo Alfonso to turn the ball in the middle of the infield. A high chopper, you probably will not get the runner at home anyway. If it's a real high chopper, you're certainly not going to get the double play. But they were looking for the ground ball, and they got it. Good play by Olrude to be able to pick that ball at first, as you said, Gary, and they got out of the inning with just the one run. Very deep into these bullpens now. Ray King, the man you saw on the mound, is the seventh pitcher used today by Jim Riggleman and the Cubs. Todd Pratt, who's done all the catching today with Piazza on the bench, who's still available, by the way. And the left hander, strike one on the Whirly Bird swing by Pratt, who's had an 0 for 4 today. Pratt or Donias. And then the pitcher do up McElroy's up in the bullpen again for the Mets. Don't think they want to go any further with Dennis Cook. Ray uh, King rather Ray King had no major league experience prior to this year. This is his second call up. He came back up on July 1. Pitching at triple A a couple of times this year. Made his debut against Atlanta at the major league level on May 21. He hasn't worked since the 26th against Montreal a third of an inning gave up one hit and that was it. He's been off a while. King on the inside corner with the off speed pitch two and two. Pratt can't believe that one. Two two delivery Pratt that should fall in right center field base hit. So Todd Pratt kicks off the 11th inning for the Mets with a lead off single. Nine hits for the Cubs in the ball game. Well, the New York Mets have eight. Pratt on with his first of the day now Ray Ardonias and expect the Mets to play for one. Obviously here in the 11th. We'll see which way Bobby Valentine wants to go. Is he going to bunt, hit, and run? Pratt does not run exceptionally well. Bunted foul. Grace was playing way back at first base. Pratt doesn't run well. He doesn't run badly either for a catcher. Seven sacrifices for Ray Ordonez, the most among position players for the Mets this year. Tyler Houston is at third and he's on the grass. 
squared again. Look to first base, trying to put it down Grace's way. He was charging. One on one. You know the amazing thing about this, Gary, on a beautiful day here in Chicago. How many people are left in this ball game? Extra innings. These fans in Chicago are just spectacular. Look at this. It is amazing how many people are left in this ball game. It's not L.A. No, nope. they're not gone by the seventh. They've seen a heck of a game. They were up and cheering in the bottom of the ninth, bottom of the eighth, bottom of the tenth. Both these teams have battled back. Ordonez takes it up high. Cubs got two runs in the fifth inning off Al Leiter. Mets came back with three in the sixth. Took the lead. Home run Rodriguez in the ninth inning tied the game. Mets in the tenth inning picked up a run. On an RBI sack fly by Edgardo Alfonso and the Cubs responded. With a run in the bottom of the tenth Benny Agbayani in the on deck circle. He'll pinch hit for Dennis Cook. Bardonias trying to get it down does. Look to first on the flip. To get the out sacrifice moving Pratt to second base. There's the potential go ahead for the Mets now at second base, Todd Pratt. Benny Agbayani is announced as the pinch hitter. No warm up action. Cubs bullpen, there's not, not many left to warm up. Mike Piazza's come out in the on deck circle. Could be the leadoff spot. He pinch hits next. Benny Agbayani with Pratt on at second base. One out. Foul ball strike one off King. The other aspect of this. Gary talking about the bullpens game so far through on Friday and Saturday such high scoring games and both ball clubs have been deeply into their bullpens already in the first two games. And now all of a sudden. A low scoring game. But you're in extra innings. Some tired pitchers in these two bullpens, boy. Some tired bodies on this man, on oh both man. sides. On both sides. Both time both teams are really tired off that Friday game. In that severe heat. Agbayani, one one count. Hit him. So two on and here comes Piazza. He'll be batting for Mel Mora who is in the leadoff spot. Mora came on defensively to take Henderson's place in left field. And here's one of the rested players having caught the first two games. Piazza's gone. Four for nine in this series with a home run and three RBIs. Facing the left hander Ray, this is not the matchup the Cubs would take if they had a choice. They don't have one. I guess they do. They could get Rick Aguilera up if he's available, but Jim Riggleman. Not going to warm anybody up in the bullpen. No, you get so deep, you've yeah. got to have, you got to save bodies. You save, save somebody. Yeah, you're not going to have the luxury of, of so-called matchups. Now you got to have somebody who can pitch you out of an inning. One-zero delivery. Piazza fouls it back. One and one. What a luxury for the New York Mets when you give Mike Piazza an off day, and then you can pick your spot if you need him during the course of the, of the game. And yep, here he is. Couldn't ask for a better spot. Runner in scoring position. Left-hander on the mound. One-one delivery. I'm just looking here. Just heard Tom. I didn't realize this. Rick Aguilera has been put on the DL today. That was done uh, just before the game started, apparently. So Aguilera appeared in yesterday's game. Is on the DL. Here's the 2 1 delivery off the end of the bat. 
Sammy Sosa with the wind blowing it in. Look at that route. Two down. That is put it in reverse. You see the big swing from Piazza. And that's why Sammy's first reaction was back on that on that ball. I remember Sammy's used to play in right field, a little bit different perspective. The big swing by Piazza broke back. Nope. Pop the ball up. Watch the swing. Watch how big it is. Oh, it looked like he was right on it. It just hit the bottom half of the ball by a fraction. He had to run a good 100 feet plus to get to that ball, it seemed like, in center field. And the pitch is taken outside by Edgardo Alfonso. Jim Riggleman is now going to come out. This is all about how you're going to pitch here. There's nobody warming up. King in the infield coming in as well. Alfonso with two down. Pratt the lead runner at second. Agbayani on at first. King has gotten one huge out but cannot let up against Edgardo Alfonso. Ray King had no major league experience as we said prior to this year triple A part of last year. Twenty five years old. Came over from Atlanta in a deal in ninety eight. Ball in the outside corner. That's as hard as he's thrown. One ball, one strike, and Edgardo Alfonso. Aguilera on the DL. I think Scott Sanders is the only one left, isn't he? The pitch. Scott Sanders, or you could use Traxel. Grounded to third. Force play at second. Played by Tyler Houston to Mickey Morandini. Good job by King. Despite a leadoff single by Pratt. Can't convert. They leave two on. We go to the bottom of the in spot in left field with Mora coming out of the ball game. And all the new Mets are going. Hey, doesn't take long to get into these games. <laughs> Here's Chuck McElroy. He came in the deal yesterday. He's 31 years old. He's a workhorse, left-hander, ground ball pitcher, sinking fastball primarily. And he'll make an appearance. He will be the seventh pitcher, sixth pitcher used by the Mets today. Chewing them up and spitting them out here today. McElroy played here in Chicago as well. He'd been with Philadelphia, Chicago, Cincinnati, California for half a season, plus, and then Colorado the last two years. Fouled off by Jeff Reed. Mets are mighty happy right now that the guys acquired in the deal got on a plane and got here. Showed up. Man. Nice going team players. Jeez. And if they had done it, you know, Masato Yoshi would be down there in the bullpen. Pat Mahomes, who pitched over four innings the other day in that game on Friday, he pitched great for the Mets. Welcome. Welcome to the New York Met pitching staff. Bring bring your work shoes. This is what's going to yeah. happen. Dennis Cook were, ended up working an inning. Had zeros across. Reed to third base, blocked. Ventura gets Reed second at bat, retired, one away. Bottom half of the eleventh inning. Ball hit so sharply that Robin Ventura had plenty of time. Good lesson. Yeah, if you don't catch the ball, at least you bounce it off your chest, keep it in front of you a couple of steps, you get to the ball. Classic way to play third base. Tyler Houston is hitting in the number nine spot. And by the way, Todd Pratt stayed in the game to catch. So if anything happened to Pratt now with Mike Piazza already having hit Matt Franco. The third catcher for the Mets, and he's already hit. So, Todd Pratt, it's all yours. Two strike count. 
You'd find some warm body. Put the gear on. Get back there. Louis Lopez. You ever catch in the big leagues? I don't think so. <laughs> that one is in the dirt. He might. He might. He might today. If you get a foul tip split finger behind on plate, somebody's got to catch. Well, we were looking at Tom um, at the uh, pitchers available for Chicago and noted Gary Gaetti's on that list. He's on. He's been. He's out <laughs> of the game. He's already can't gone. come back in. Matt Franco, of course, made one of those appearances for the Mets this year. Two ball, two strike count. Off the end of the bat by Tyler Houston. That sun's a problem in right field, but hauled in by Sedano. Two down in the 11th inning. The Chicago Cubs, in the trades that they were involved in yesterday, did acquire Micah Bowie. And he's going to be on the major league roster, but we don't know whether he's arrived here yet. He was not here at game time. The Jim Riggleman down to one pitcher in the bullpen for a reliever. Mickey Morandini on the ground ball. Alfonso in a 1 2 3 inning for Chuck McElroy and a couple of ground balls. As we told you, that's how he makes his game. Lip. As we go to the 12th inning, King will stay on here to work. It's really his game now until he just plain old runs out of gas. King did a good job with big outs against the Mets in the 11th. Here in the 12th inning, he'll face the middle of the order. Olerud Ventura and Hamilton are due up. You could send some of your starters down there, obviously. You sent Traxel down there. He only made it to the third or fourth inning the other day. Had that huge lead, which he could not hold. Steve Traxel, we're talking about this starting pitcher of this opening series. First game of this series in Chicago. Micah Bowie is here, but he's scheduled to start on Tuesday. It's only Sunday. <laughs> what do you think Bob Feller have to say about this? Oh, a lot. Huh? A lot. John Olerud, two not, for five. You're not fishing till Tuesday. Get down there. Get down in that bullpen. A little work and do you good. Everybody gets an inning. And there's some truth in it too. Yeah. One ball, one strike count. Leiter gave up two runs, seven hits over seven. The other two came off from Mondo Benitez. Rodriguez tied the game up in the ninth with a leadoff homer. And then the run in the tenth charge of Benitez that tied the game up again. Mets got their runs off back three off him out of the bullpen. One off Terry Adams. Three in the sixth inning and one in the tenth. For New York. Nine hits for the Cubs, eight hits for the Mets. And he walked. So a leadoff walk for Olerud here in the 12th inning. We just keep piling up the numbers. And a bad situation here as far as advancing the runners is that Olerud does not run well. Ventura does not run well. So do you bunt here? A left hand pitcher, left hand hitter. Ray King in his ninth appearance for the Cubs on the mound. Ventura does not show bunt, takes it down low for a ball. And the Cubs not even holding Ventura on first base. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I mean, Olrud on first base, excuse me. That's a wow. Grace isn't even jockeying behind John Olerud. King falls behind 2 0 on Ventura. Mark Grace is way behind him. And we will get the conference at the mound here. Marty Demerit on his way out, pitching coach. Rick Reed, the catcher, out there as well. Boy, what a struggle this has turned into. Pretty simple. You got to get the ball over the plate to get somebody out. He's not going to swing at it. This is a veteran hitter at the plate, <laughs> young man, and you're going to have to throw strikes if you want to get out of the inning. Trust in your stuff. Go ahead. Go after him. Be aggressive and throw strikes. Basic lesson ABC.
Down 2 0. Oh. Robin Ventura. Robin with a two for four day to day and an intentional walk. So he's had seven hits now in this series and 14 at bats. Closing in on the 300 mark, hitting 298. Three and one. That's, of course, going to take any of these walks they can get. Move the runners around. And you wonder if Olrud will be off here. Three and one count. Not going. Swung on and missed. Three and two. Not going, and thank God, would have been out by a mile. Tough to see right now, time. You got the very tough. The sun's right at the mound. The hitters in the shade. Sun. Uh, the ball came in out of the sun into the shade. Left hander against left hander. Three two. Runner not going. Struck him out. Robin did not get good cuts. Sure looked like he was not seeing that ball very well and not at bat. That was three bad swings by Robin Ventura. And you don't see that very often. He just didn't pick the ball up. Got it again. See what kind of pitch it is. Fastball. He just flat missed him. Right over the top of it. Had a good pitch to hit there. Just missed it. Daryl Hamilton up. RBI single, sixth inning. Go ahead, RBI at the time. He's been involved in maybe the key play of this game. In the eighth inning, he hit a shot down to first that Mike Grace made a stop on. There were runners two on with one out. Grace made the play, saved at least one run. Mets ended up not scoring in the eighth inning off that ball. And a strike taken, one and one. People who follow baseball right now looking at this game would be going, who are these guys? <laughs> Hamilton's hitting. If you didn't read the morning paper, you wouldn't know. King's pitching. The inside corner strike. Now Grace has moved behind Olerud. Not on the bag, but much closer than he was with Ventura up trying to keep him close to the base with one away. He's been fiddling around over there behind Olerud. He's come to the bag a couple times, kicked it, made a little noise. Toward short, Alexander Morandini. I'll tell you one thing, Mr. King is earning himself some big time points right now with the Chicago Cubs. He's getting it done. Bottom half of the 12 coming up in this game. <laughs> the only one who didn't strike out. Yeah, but he's only struck out 20 times all year, and you got to find out who those 20 were off of. You got some kind of pitcher if you can strike him out. What an exhibition by Al Leiter. Non decision, of course, in the start. Manny Alexander, Mark Grace, and Sammy Sosa, bottom of the 12th inning. Alexander starting at short. Jose Hernandez traded yesterday to Atlanta in the Terry Mulholland deal with three minor leaguers. Micah Bowie, one of those who's here, a pitcher, 24 years old, but he's scheduled to start Tuesday. They're down to Sanders in the bullpen. McElroy with a 1 2 delivery. And the Alexander takes it. Now, bear in mind, Chuck McElroy is not used to going very long in games. Tom and I were noting between innings here McElroy, 41 games appeared in and only 40 and two thirds innings pitched. He's one of those left handers who comes on to get guys out. Three balls, two strikes, Alexander. He comes on to pitch an inning, set up man. You got an inning when you got one or two left handers that you got to face, you run them out there for that inning, and that's about a day's work for him. Got him. Came back on the 3 2. McElroy gets the strikeout. Mike Grace. 
first strikeout for McElroy, fourth batter face. Grace has had two singles, a double, a walk, and grounded out, one RBI. Takes that one to left center field. Hamilton. Two down. Fans will be up for this one. As Sammy comes to the plate. Pat Mahomes has been throwing down in the Met bullpen. Her last inning. That had to be. Had to be for Sosa. The only reason he would be throwing down. Just getting his work on the side. He's been throwing and has been throwing hard for a long time. Here he comes. So Mahomes will come on to face Sosa, bottom of the 12th inning tie game with two. Days. It's four and two thirds innings of relief here on Friday. Yeah, he got the victory in that opening game, and that's what 10 to 9. And he'll try to get Sosa out here. Two down, nobody on. Sosa's only face Pat Mahomes once. There's the one on him. Four runs, eight hits for the Mets, four runs, nine hits for the Cubs, and 0 for Day for Sammy. Ball two from Pat Mahomes. Job by McElroy in inning and two thirds struck out one. And Sammy Sosa went up there. The first pitch, he looked like he had no intention whatsoever of swinging the bat. This short, we're done it. And on we go. Get the one, two, three inning. Great to see you right now. <laughs> I like to remind him of that. Yeah, he just puts puts him into a perpetual funk when I say that. And I'm trying to some, somewhere. Come on, you got to help me now. Let's go through all. Let's go the alphabet. And we'll talk about all the left-handed pitchers that have pitched for. The, there's no way you would know. It's 1968. I know this is a long game, but I know. But I'm stretching <laughs> this baby out. And I think Ray King comes out of the game trying to warm up, and hurt himself. So here we go, Roger Cedeno, as we go to the 13th and a strike taken. This is the warm-up by King and why he had to leave. Left field corner, and that's going to fall in. Cedeno, and he's got a stand up double. Roger Cedeno taking one the other way. Well, the leadoff man on here in the 13th inning. Cedeno gets his first hit of the game. Sinker on the outside part of the plate. He got it up down that left field corner, and Cedeno had thoughts of a triple as he was heading for second base. Boy. Mets now have the nine hits along with the Cubs. Talent just oozing out of that young man. He gets more and more impressive every game. So the Mets with a chance to grab the lead again here in the 13th. Looking to bunt Todd Pratt. Started, pulled it back. A little chin music underneath. One and all. Oh. He'll look down to third base. Ray Ordonez is the on deck batter. Scott Sanders worked in the ball game Friday night. Gave up two runs and four hits in just an inning and two thirds. Sanders working here and Pratt does try and bunt it and missed it one on one. You can see he jerked at the ball jabbed at it and couldn't get it. You got Sedano on second base. I mean it's, it has to be a real bad bunt. I mean a bad bunt. To not get Sedano the third base watch him jab jab at the ball instead of just leaving the bat out there and letting the ball come to the bat. One one good fastball one ball two strike count Sanders blew that one by him 
Pratt is a better hitter with two strikes. He has that real big swing when he has less than two strikes. And many times he will cut his swing there down. There's Masato Yoshi. And he'll be the next warm body out of the Met bullpen. One two count. Ooh, really jammed him that time and Todd Pratt went right into the ball. Just able to protect himself <laughs> might have hit him. One ball two strike count so Daniel back to second base. I saw Gary Sutherland one day at Shea Stadium. Take a look at this again the ball inside. On that exact kind of swing. Sutherland fouled the ball off his bat against Nolan Ryan and the ball went up and hit him right in the bridge of the nose and blood was just splurting all over home plate. Pratt to center field Sammy Sosa coming hard. Now the Mets don't get it done there. They wanted that runner advanced. Now one away. Well he made contact and made pretty good contact to boot. Now I was too good a contact. You want to get the ball on the ground to the right side to line drive to center field. Now Tom this has got to be the meeting at the mound about Sedano trying to steal third. Probably. You're going to have to hold him. How are you going to play Ordonez? You got Benny Agbaani on the on deck circle. If this is a meeting about holding the runner on second base. <laughs> they were covering every possible aspect. Because if that's all they were talking about it should have been a very short meeting. And if you're going to hold. Sardinia at third then you're going to have to pull the third baseman up not let him play way off the line. Tyler Houston looking down towards Sedano. Second baseman Morandini will jockey, try and hold him. And first ball hitting and popped up. Mark Grace. Oh my. Two down. See Dave Wallace looking down. He wants to get him going, is what he's saying. Yoshi was standing there watching. They want to make sure Yoshi's ready to come into the ball game. Al Jackson, pitching coach, down there with him. Because now there are two away. Benny Agbayani will be given the intentional pass with first base open, and Pat Mahomes, the pitcher, on deck. That's how deep we've gone into this ball game. There is ball four. Agbayani gets the intentional pass. Louis Lopez has not played in this game. And that's it. And the Mets, obviously, that being it, are down to no catcher left. Lopez is the only position player remaining. The only other thing you could do if you hit Lopez, and something did happen to Pratt, you'd have to take Pratt out, but Lopez find somebody to catch and use one of your pitchers in the outfield. Rick Reed has played in the outfield before. Now Mahomes is up and will take the at bat. If you're going to run, he might as well try and run. Hope for an errant throw or something. With two down, Sedano at second, and Agbayani at first, and a strike taken by Mahomes. Well, you might try to steal a run exactly right, Gary. Try to get Sedano to third, and then try a delayed steal with Agbayani at first, and try and get him in a rundown. See if the Cubs will bite on that. Mahomes a good hitter. He's three for nine, three doubles, in fact, and bloops that one. Sosa. Diving, not going to be made by Rodriguez. Throw will come to third. Run crosses the plate. Mets have the lead. Pat Mahomes delivers an RBI single. Benny Agbayani is tagged out, trying to go to third on that, but the run crossed before the out. So Sedano has crossed the plate, and the Mets.
lead it by one. Mahomes with an RBI. Mahomes delivering his third RBI and his fourth hit. He's four for ten now as a hitter. And now he's got a chance to win the ball game on the mound. See, Bobby Valentine had this all figured out. I was going to get Sedano to third. The fake steal by Agbani at first. Try to get in the rundown and steal a run. Pat Mahomes says, no, I'll take care of it. No, wait, just relax here. I'll take care of it. And Just out of the reach of Rodriguez. Len Allen Hill is up as we go to the bottom half of the 13th. The Mets with a chance to win it again. Hill, Rodriguez, and then probably a pinch hitter. If anybody's left. And that one's down low. A pinch hitter. Well, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Two ball, one strikeout. Steve Stone says he's going down. He wants to play. Well, we've decided both of you are going down. If the game goes any further, you two are going to pitch. <laughs> There's the lineup card. What a mess. It's about what my scorecard looks like right there. 2 2 delivery. Chopper to third. Robin Ventura. <laughs> He'll retired. One away. Lead off man gone here in the 13th. Henry Rodriguez. Nets had the lead going to the bottom of the ninth inning. And Rodriguez delivered a home run on Fernando Benitez and tied the ball game up. The pitcher is on deck. And a strike from Mahomes. Rodriguez 19 home runs on the year. Holmes misses down low one ball one strike. And there isn't anybody else. No that's it. Unless they made it. We didn't know about Aguilera being on the DL. Okay, so unless they did something that we're not aware of. But Sanders is on the index circle. And they added Micah Bowie to the roster apparently before the game he's listed on the roster. So. Don't know if he's here. He's here. Found out he is here. But he's supposed to pitch Tuesday and they don't want to use him. One ball, two strike count. Henry Rodriguez, Pat Mahomes. This is the out they need. And they're going to get it. Holarud with a pick, two down. Good play by John Olrud and a bit of redemption. Remember the error in the ball game that he made. And a lot potentially allowed the winning run to score or the time run to score here a good play glove flared open let it come to you and then gobble it up. So Sanders will try and do what Mahomes did and that's get on. Right now Mahomes the game winning RBI and a game winning pitcher. If he can get the opposing pitcher out. Sanders will take ball one. Caught right in the webbing on that ball that was hit down to first. Sanders has four hits, one double, 16 at bats, one RBI. Now he wants a walk. Two ball, one strike count. Out of players. His 13 inning game. In the dirt. Three and one. I think he'll take ball. No, <laughs> wishful thinking, middle. <laughs> Three two. Three two delivery. Sanders to left field. Pretty good one at the wall. It's right off the basket. Sanders on his way to second base with a two out double. Bobby Valentine thinks he missed first base. No 
what you got to do here is wait for the batter to come up, step on the rubber, then throw over to first base on the appeal. That's what they'll do here. That's the proper way. Wouldn't that be a fitting ending to a game at Wrigley? Oh, man. He'll step on the rubber. Got to come to a set, step off. Batters in. Step off, throw to first. He touched it. And we saved this for you. Maybe not the most graceful thing around the base. And that's why Bobby was. Objecting, but yes, in fact, right in the middle of the base did he step. How about this? Read up. Sanders, the pitcher, delivering a double and missed a home run by a matter of feet. Jeff Reed. Two down. Potential tying run again on. Mahomes in with a strike to Reed. One for two today. Single grounded out after coming on as a pinch hitter for Benito Santiago. Batting at 260. Mets have the lead. 5 4. Two down in the 13th. 101. Strike count. Big cut, one and two. Pratt got up a little slowly after that swing. The catcher for the Mets regrouping a bit behind the plate. That one right over his head. One, two, two down. Mets looking for the final out. You take it. <laughs> what an eye. It was worth quite a bit above home plate. But. Two balls, two strikes. Sanders off second base. Reed fouls it off. Stays at two and two. Forever match of this three game set in what has been an exhausting three days for these two teams. Run fests in the first two. Pitching duel to start this one, then bullpen surrendering leads in the second half of this game. Two balls, two strikes. Reed waiting. Swung on and missed, and the Mets win it. So Pat Mahomes will have the game winning RBI as well as the victory as the pitcher. Mahomes is now 5 and 0. Oh. Couple of wins in this series. And for the Chicago Cubs, they lose two out of three. On a weekend of heat and home runs and high scores in the first two games, and a little bit of everything here. Pat Mahomes, two victories in this series, four and two thirds innings of relief. And the 10 and 9 victory on Friday, and he gets a win here and the winning base hit, Gary, as you said. An amazing three game set, but kind of expected here in Wrigley Field. The Mets in extra inning games now are 4 and 2, while the Cubs go 3 and 2. Mets have won their 19th one run game. 19 and 12. The Braves also won today, so the Mets will remain a half game behind. Take a look at the last pitch. Looked like a fastball up, and Reed swung right through it. Yep, good pitch by Mahomes. And a small sidelight of all this is that.